The biggest staple of Minecraft is the Minecraft block. You think of Minecraft, you think of block. I mean, everywhere you look, there are hundreds, if not millions of these little guys spread across each Minecraft world. And there are over 800 different variations of these Minecraft blocks with their own quirks, functions, and personality. So I thought I'd stupidly take the role today to rank every single individual Minecraft block in depth and detail. And now you might be thinking, but Renny, every single block has their own individual use. So how on earth are you going to rank them? Well, good thing you asked, my friend. Friend. The two main points I'm going to use to rank every single block is first, number one, the usage. A block's purpose. For example, the furnace is used to smelt items. Cobblestone can be used to craft stone tools, which can help you progress. Signs can be written on, that's pretty cool. So depending on how useful that block is, that is going to change its ranking. Point number two is decoration. How good does the block look? Is it ugly? How well can this block be used in builds? All of these points will also help me rank the block. And then lastly, any other cool features, facts, or secret uses will also be used to help rank the block. I'll quickly mention that there are over 800 different blocks in Minecraft, but in this list, there's only going to be over 600 because I'm not going to rank any color variation. For example, I'm going to rank the block of concrete, just not every single color variation like lime green or magenta concrete. This only applies to color variations like the colored beds or colored wool. I am actually going to rank every single variation of, say, wooden planks. And before we head into this massive ranking, I have to quickly say that Minecraft can be played in millions of different different ways and that's fine the way i play minecraft and use blocks is going to be different to the way you do so hopefully we agree on a lot of things but if we don't that's fine and we can discuss about it in the comment section down below Whew! anyway oof, that was a lot let's uh let's get into this giant ranking of over 600 different minecraft blocks kicking us off in f tier we have number 635 the glow lichen glow lichen Lichen. So not only is this block very ugly, but it also has no purpose either. You could use this block for lighting if you wanted to, but it only emits a light level of seven. The reason why I dislike this block so much is because, you know, we all go on our mining trips. You know me, I love a good mining trip. And when I'm going mining, I'm looking for diamonds. So when we see diamonds in caves, you know, we get really excited. We found a diamond. This is awesome. But when we go to mine that diamond, that is no diamond, my friend. No, no, no. That is our good friend, the glow lichen. This thing also can't help itself from breaking the entire game. Back in a snapshot in 1.17, the glow lichen would allow you to place water in the nether. Great. Good job, glow lichen. Now, this would actually be really cool if this block wasn't the glow lichen. The glow, the glow lichen sucks. Number 634, the cobweb. Introduced in the beta version 1.5, the cobweb was added to annoy you. The main purpose of the cobweb is to slow things down, especially players like you heading towards a slow, painful death. But not only that, these cobwebs can get you stuck in mine shafts while an army of spiders can run through these cobwebs at the speed of light. Yeah. I have died so many times to the cause of cobwebs. These blocks are basically naturally spawning death traps that can spawn in mine shafts, strongholds, igloos, abandoned villages, and woodland mansions. If you break these guys with a sword, you can grab one piece of string from them. And if you want to grab these cobwebs yourself to trap people like me, you're going to have to break them with shears. Yeah, I'd give these cobwebs an F because they're very annoying, sticky, and slow. These stupid cobwebs. <laughs> These Number 633, the tough block. This is the first block on our list that is literally just a block. It is currently only used for decoration and it can't be crafted into anything. And to be honest, it looks like a wish.com gravel. I guess when you're strip mining and you come across tough, you can mine faster, but that's pretty much the only thing you could take away. Number 632, the nether sprout. These little guys are non-solid fungi blocks that generate in the warped forests. The nether sprout acts as a small grass for the nether, but other than that, doesn't really do much. You can place it on every dirt for decoration, but you can't even place it in pots. The only real usage this nether sprout has is that you can place it in a composter, but even then, it only has half a chance to raise the compost level by one. Number 631, the hanging roots. Added in version 1.17, hanging roots are a naturally decorated block found underground in the lush caves biome. You can find these guys beneath an azalea tree or on the surface above it. And if you really want, you can use bone meal on rooted dirt to actually create hanging roots below the block. Now, the hanging Hanging root itself is just mainly used as a decorative block for any of your cool builds if you're building an overgrown cavern or anything like that. It is pretty ugly and I personally wouldn't use it unless I was building anything overgrown. You can shear these guys to pick them up and then you can use them in a composter but it only has 30% chance of raising the compost level by one. So, not the best. Number 630 is the dripstone block. Added in 1.17, the dripstone block is a rock that allows pointed dripstones to grow beneath it. But that is pretty much the only other use for it, other than using it for decoration, which personally I don't see many people using it for. And the reason why I say that 
that is that I think the pointed dripstone, it just overshadows this block completely. It has better uses and it looks much better. Number 629, the polished basalt. Added with the nether update in 1.16, the polished basalt is the polished version of the basalt and can be found as a part of ancient cities. Now you can gain polished basalt by crafting four basalt together in a crafting table, or you could put basalt in a stone cutter. Now I don't know why this block is called polished basalt because this block just doesn't look polished at all. It is still very ugly. That's right guys, hot take right now. I am a polished basalt hater. I know, I know. I'm sorry all basalt lovers out there if I've let you down, I know. Although one saving grace here, if you do put the note block above basalt, you can make a bass drum sound. That is pretty cool. And of course number 628 is the subscribe block. Yeah. If you could all mind that subscribe button. See what, see what I did there, mind, mind the block the subscribe if you could just head down below and give that little subscribe button a little boop a little boop <coughs> that would that would help out a lot thank you guys so much let's get back into ranking these blocks number 628 the petrified oak slab for those who don't know this very strange and weird block you must be thinking when you shut your mouth boy there's no such thing as a petrified oak slab what are you chatting but what if i told you there is. Enter the Kaman 18 music, yeah. Back in the beta version of 1.3, Notch decided to add a few new slabs. Now at the time, all of these slabs had the same ID as the stone slab, which basically meant all of these slabs were stone. Fast forward to the patch for 1.3, now Notch had actually added a new ID just for wooden slabs, leaving the old wooden slab still in the game that still acted like stone. So that meant if you update it all the way to the newest version of Minecraft, you can still have petrified oak slabs that don't burn and act like stone. Now obviously, this block doesn't have many uses today. That is why it's so low on this list. Still better than glow lichen though. I've put it up a few numbers on this list just for the fact that this block has a cool history. It can still be used in game today. Number 627, the dried kelp block. This block's sole purpose is for those avid dried kelp collectors, which to be honest, I don't know how many of you uh, collect dried kelp. That's why this block is kind of pointless. So this block pretty much keeps all of your dried kelp compact into one block. You can use this block to smell things if you want, but the burn duration of the dried kelp block is only only a quarter of the block of coal. And this block lasts two and a half times longer than one piece of coal, but it costs nine dried kelp. So at this point, just use coal. Why, why are you collecting dried kelp? What are you doing? Number 626 is Deep Slate. Not to be confused with Cobble Deep Slate because Cobble Deep Slate has a few other uses. Normal Deep Slate, on the other hand, gets in the way of me mining to my diamonds. Added in version 1.17, Deep Slate was added into the game to be a part of the new cave update. It can be found on the new Y levels deep underground and functions very similar to stone but takes so much longer to break. This thing feels like it takes, like it's almost Christmas and I'm still mining the same Deep Slate block. Okay, maybe I'm being a a little bit dramatic, but all this block does is make my mining trip way more sluggish and slow. Number 625, Infested Stone. Added in the beta version 1.8, these sneaky slimy blocks try to generate 14 times per chunk. These guys also naturally generate strongholds and igloo basements. Now the reason why these guys are so low is because you could just be minding your own business, you know, adventuring the world of Minecraft in the stronghold, and all of a sudden, you get jumped by a gang of silverfish. And then when you attack one, another spawns, and then another spawns, and then you'll never guess what happens, another spawns. So you either fight your way out or you die a horrible death. Now these guys can come in any variations and I have ranked them but it doesn't matter because they all do the gosh dang same thing. Which is murder you. Number 624 is infested deep slate. The same thing but this time it's in deep slate form which makes deep slate even worse. 623 infested cobblestone. They did cobblestone so dirty with this one. We all love cobblestone and you feel like that cobblestone is going to be placed by someone then BAM! Silverfish to the face. 622 is infested chisel stone brick. It looks cooler. 621 is infested cracked stone bricks. Yeah, this looks like a block a silverfish would live in. 620 is infested mossy stone bricks. At least with this one, it looks slimy, slippery. It's kind of on theme with silverfish. And 619 is infested stone bricks. Probably the coolest looking out of the bunch. I'm just a big fan of stone bricks. Number 618 is calcite. Added in version 1.17, calcite was added to be a part of the geodes. This block naturally spawns as part of the structure of the amethyst geodes between the smooth basalt and the block of amethyst layers, but it does also generate in stony peaks as well. Now this block doesn't have any uses at all other than just the block itself being used for decoration. When I'm playing, I don't tend to use this block myself because I have many other options available, so that's why it's quite low on this list. Number 617, the block of raw copper. 
Added in 1.17, the block of raw copper is used to compact all of your raw copper together. And that's pretty much it. I mean, to start off, this block is very, very ugly. It's a very stinky block. And I personally would not be using this block anytime soon. What I would be doing is smelting down my copper for better uses. And if I wanted to compact my copper, I would make a copper block. So for me, this renders the block of raw copper completely useless and such a stinky block. Number 616, Warped Roots. The nether roots are basically nether grass and is only really used for decoration. The roots can be planted in pots, which is pretty cool, and has a 65% chance of increasing the composter level by one. Now, these specifically are the warp roots, the blue variation. There's also another variation, which is 615, the crimson roots, the red variation of the warped roots. Both of these blocks act and are used the exact same way. They just look a little bit different. Number 614, the block of lapis. This block was added all the way back in the beta version of 1.2 and is now mainly used to just store lapis. I mean, since there's a lot of lapis going around in these caves, especially if you have Fortune 3, the lapis is going to rack up. So if you find you have too much lapis, you can always craft them into blocks. I personally never do this myself. I like to just keep my lapis all in one chest. Th this is my lapis chest. So I'd never really have a use for this block. And in my personal opinion, this is one of the more uglier blocks inside of Minecraft. It's kind of done lapis a little bit dirty. I feel like it doesn't have the same polish any of the other blocks do have. Number 613, the Skulk Vein. Similar to all vines in this game, this Skulk Vein can be placed on all sides of a block. Decoration is the Skulk Vein's only purpose, but I gotta say, I do like the way it glows and sparkles. I think that looks pretty cool. Other than that, this block is pretty useless. <laughs> Number 612, the Skulk Shrieker. All this block has ever done done for me is snitched on me when I'm in the ancient city. Like, I'll be running through the ancient city, minding my own business. I probably shouldn't be running, but all of a sudden, Rah! be quiet. Shh, stop screaming, dummy Dumbo. You're gonna get me killed. And not only does this thing call the warden on you if it calls a few times, but it'll also give you the new effect darkness, where you literally cannot see anything. And when the warden comes, oh boy, <laughs> good luck. Y you might, you're gonna need it. It's why this block sucks. It's a stinky block. Number 611, beetroot. Beetroot can be used as a food to eat, which restores one hunger, and can be crafted into beetroot soup, which gives six hunger. It can also be used as red dye, and if you really want, you can use it to breed pigs as well. Personally, though, I think there are way better options for vegetable foods, like the carrots or potatoes, and that is why I just simply never really use this block. Number 609, Concrete Powder. Now, I know what some of you are probably thinking. Concrete is an amazing block, and I do agree, but for me, Concrete Powder is the younger, more annoying, tedious sibling to concrete, and gets in the way of me of just actually having concrete. It would be so much easier just to make concrete because with concrete powder, it is a gravity affected block, which can make it easier to make concrete, but you have to mix it with water no matter what, which is so annoying. I have to go through all of this just to get concrete, but maybe I'm just a lazy Minecraft player. That could be an option. Yeah, I'm going to write that down. That's, that's noted. Number 608 is a reinforced deep slate. Added in 1.19, reinforced deep slate was added apparently to add mystery. This was according to King B Dogs, who is a Mojang employee. And I will say this block definitely added added mystery because no one has an absolute clue what this block is for. Like, what is it? What is it doing there? Is that a, is that going to be a portal? Is this block ever going to be used for something? Similar to bedrock, it's unobtainable in survival, but you can actually break it, unlike bedrock. If you just sit there and mine this bad boy for hours, but, but you'll never get it, unfortunately. The mystery this block holds is pretty cool, and we might find out what it will do eventually. Now, we're finally moving on to our first block of the E tier. Number 607 is cut red sandstone. Crafted with four red sandstone, the cut red sandstone just looks like smooth sandstone with a little line going across the top, which can have its uses in some decoration, but personally, I never really use this block. Number 606 is packed mud. Now, packed mud is the weird stage after mud when you craft it with wheat, but before mud bricks, which actually look good. Packed mud, on the other hand, looks like poo, and you need four of them to craft mud bricks. Number 605, the small fern. The small fern is completely just a decorative block. They spawn naturally in forests, plains, other grassy biomes. If you use bone meal on grass, you can get these and pick them up with with shears, and then you can use them again as a nice decorative block. Number 604 is the large fern. Who would have thought the older sibling to the small fern? Otherwise known as double ferns, they can appear in mega tiger biomes, and when harvested, they drop two ferns. Again, this is just a nice decorative block for your garden builds or anything like that. Number 603 is the moss carpet. This block acts very much like the normal carpet, but is crafted with two moss blocks instead. It has most of the standard properties that the carpet does have, except that it's not flammable, it can't be pushed 
on pistons, and it can't be equipped on llamas. That would be that would be silly. Now I would never use this block over carpet itself. That's why it's so low, and I would only really use this block as a decorative block for a grassy or lush cave area. Number 602 is the weeping vines. These blocks are only found in the nether crimson forests and can be used to climb up and down. These vines grow naturally and can be placed on top of. Bone meal can grow these guys as well. If you break these guys with a shear, you will always get them. And if you want to place her in a composter, you can. It just has a 50% chance of raising by one level. These vines in the crimson biome also have a warped counterpart, which is 601, the twisting vine. Pretty much works the same way as the weeping vine, but is blue now. And naturally spawns in warped forests. I'll also mention that these guys can actually negate fall damage if you land on them properly. Although there are better options, this is still a nice feature to have in the nether. Coming in at number 600 is the nether wart block. These blocks spawn in the nether as part of the huge fungi, which is the nether trees. Or specifically, the nether wart can be crafted with nine nether warts. Piglins, zombified piglins, and hoglins do not spawn on top of the nether wart block. And the other variant of this block is number 599, the warped wart block. It's a turquoise blue variant of the nether wart block. And both of these blocks can be fed into a composter with an 85% chance of leveling up the pile. Number 598 is the granite wall, which is our first wall on this list. The wall is a decorative block very similar to fences. They can be crafted with six of their respective blocks at the bottom of the crafting table, or you can simply stone cut your chosen block down into a wall. Walls have the exact same use as fences, whereas mobs or players can't actually jump over them. It would make sense to use walls as they're more efficient at fencing off mobs, as instead of placing two blocks, you could just place one wall, which is half the blocks. However, if you are trying to stop those spooky, scary mobs from getting to you, they're still gonna get you. Skeletons can still shoot over walls, and a creeper, well, if you're standing next to that wall, that creeper is gonna creep, let me tell you. It's gonna blow up all over the place. Here's a fun fact about walls. When you use a block to stone cut the walls, you can actually get 64, a full stack. Instead, if you craft them, you're only gonna get 60. Anyway, about the granite wall itself specifically, granite is one of the worst looking stone blocks in my opinion, and I would personally never use the granite stone wall because it looks the worst out of all of them. Number 597 is the andesite wall. Again, there are so many better options over the andesite wall. The only reason you'd really use this block is if you really, really, really needed walls and you only had stacks of andesite. Number 596 is the diorite wall. We're getting better. I prefer diorite over the last two blocks, but still for me personally, for the wall specifically, there are better options out there. 595 is the blackstone wall. I would use the polished versions over this block any day of the week. 594 is the prismarine wall. A more underwater ocean monument theme with this wall. I would personally only use it if I had an underwater base with a conduit, but I do like the color of it and I think it still looks pretty cool. Number 593 is the cobbled deep slit wall. Because I have so much cobbled deep slit from mining, I would just use this variant for a quick wall. But again, there are better variants and I could just stone cut the cobbled deep slit. 592 is the polished blackstone wall. A little bit better than some other variants on this list, but still not the best looking wall. Number 591 is the red sandstone wall. If you're going for a desert themed build, maybe a desert village of some sort, these blocks might just help you out. Number 590 is the mossy cobblestone wall. This block could be used to add any spooky atmosphere to any build. You got cobblestone walls and you want it to look a little bit more overgrown, bam, mossy cobblestone wall. Very cool. Number 589 is the polished blackstone brick wall. Now we're getting a little bit better because this is a brick wall and it's polished. In case you couldn't read the name. If you're using a lot of blackstone or blackstone bricks in your build, these walls could definitely help out your build just to make it look a little bit better. Number 588 is the polished deep slit wall. I tend to use this wall when I decorate my mines in the mine shafts. Down in the deep mines, I plop a lantern on this wall. And as this block looks a lot more like slate, I think it adds to the mines. Number 587 is the deep slit tile wall. The brick texture on this wall looks very good. Again, if you're building with any kind of stone cut deep slate, this wall could definitely help you build out a little bit. Number 586 is the mud brick wall. If you're out in the mangrove swamp and you want a cool block, this is a fairly cool block to pick up. And my guess is if they ever make a swamp village, they definitely use this block. Number 585 is the brick wall, an absolute classic. Although to this day, I don't think the brick wall or the brick texture has aged very well. I only tend to use this block whenever I'm building with bricks. Number 584 is the sandstone wall. I think these blocks look really good in the desert, obviously, because they're sandstone, and they actually do naturally generate in sand villages. 583 is the nether brick wall. If I'm building a cool base in the nether, I would think of using these blocks, as I don't tend to use walls anyway, but if I was to use walls in the nether, it would be this block, which is quite a specific use when I'm thinking about it. Number 582 is the red nether brick wall. I would use the red nether brick variant over the nether brick variant, just because it has much more of a vibrant touch, and I prefer the texture. Number 580 is the end stone wall. The fact that end stone has its own wall as well is pretty cool, so if you make an endstone base in the end, this block is 
probably perfect for you. Number 579 is the mossy stone brick wall. If you're using stone bricks in a build, which I normally do, this block pairs well with the normal brick and can add an overgrown or spooky vibe. Number 578 is the cobblestone wall. This block is an absolute classic. I'd use this block for my gardens all the time in the older versions of Minecraft, as it is pretty easy to craft early game as well. This block was added all the way in 1.4.2 with the mossy cobblestone wall, and to be honest, it's aged pretty well. Number 577 is the deep slate brick wall. Now, I tend to have a lot of cobbled deep slate after a lot of mining. Now, with only a handful of options you can do with cobbled deep slate, I personally use it with a stone cutter, and if I ever need a wall, I'll cut it down into deep slate brick wall. Overall, I like the texture of this block. It's clean, it's smooth, and nice. Number 576 is the stone brick wall. Personally, my favorite wall, and this wall is very versatile. You could use it with almost any build. It's clean, it's smooth, it looks very good. Thumbs up from me, my favorite wall in Minecraft. Number 575 is the chiseled polished blackstone. First shown in the 1.16 snapshot, the chiseled polished blackstone is a very unique and decorative block. You can't actually do anything with this block other than use it for decoration. So even though it has its own unique look, pretty low on this list. Sorry, little guy. Number 574 is granite. The first block out of the terrific trio. Granite is one of the blocks that you find while mining that you don't necessarily want to find. It's higher than the walls just because granite does actually have its fair uses. Granite can be used to craft polished granite, which is a little bit better, but not amazing. And remember, granite Granite can actually be used to create a stone cutter, which is pretty cool. And granite can be stone cut into any slabs, stays, or its polished counterpart. I can't physically bring myself to put granite any higher because it's granite. This block is stinky. Number 573 is andesite. Now we're getting a little bit better with the terrific trio. This one looks a little bit better, but it's still just a wish.com stone or cobblestone. It can still be crafted the same way granite can be crafted, but this time, if crafted with diorite, you can get two andesite. What a deal. Yeah, two andesite. Woo. Number 572 is diorite. In my personal opinion, the superior out of all three, diorite doesn't look as bad as the other two. And I feel like in some certain situations, diorite can actually be used in builds, especially its counterpart, polished diorite. Not only that, though, diorite is so superior, you can use diorite to craft andesite, and you can use diorite to craft granite. And if you're really feeling fancy, you could use cobblestone and quartz to create your own diorite. Number 571 is polished granite, number 570 is polished andesite, and number 569 is polished diorite. Now, the order out of these three go the exact same as granite and the site then diorite because all of these are just the polished versions of their original block and they look so much better. I'd way rather use the polished variants to build than the normal variants themselves because like in the name, they are polished. 10, 10 out of 10 common right there. Number 568 is chiseled deep slate. Again, a very cool, unique looking decorative block, but that is pretty much the only uses this block brings to the table. Decoratively wise though, if you have a fortress for a base, this block could come in very handy as this block holds a bit of a fortification vibe. Number 567 is smooth red sandstone. Now this block gets confused a lot with the cut sandstone, but this is its own block, which is pretty much smooth on every single surface. And for that fact alone, I feel like this block fits into a lot more builds. There's no fancy graphics or cool patterns on this block, which makes it fit in easy. Number 566 is the smooth sandstone. This is the sandstone variant of the smooth sandstone. And the only difference is it's not red, which again could help it fit in with even more builds like like a desert village in the sand. Number 565 is polished blackstone, a decorative block that fits in with all of your deep sled builds. For me personally, this block is a little bit too grainy, not as polished as some other blocks, so that's why it's a little bit low on this list. But where this block does shine is in deep sled mines, or if you've built a deep sled fortress on your most recent world like me, then this block would fit in as well. Number 564 is the mangrove roots. Added in 1.19, these mangrove roots are a part of the fairly new mangrove trees. Now, a few things I do like about these blocks. And the first thing is you can actually see through them. That's pretty cool. Not only that, though, this block can be smelted down in furnaces. And the main cool feature is this block can be waterlogged for a simple cobblestone generator. 563 is cut sandstone. Added in version 1.24 and originally called smooth sandstone, the cut sandstone is the variation with this little cut going across the top. Unfortunately, this block isn't anything special. It's just another decorative sand block that isn't going to quite blow anyone's minds away. 562 is bricks. This block has a long history. 
history. It was introduced in Java Edition Classic all the way back in 2009, where in Survival Test 0.26, Notch added bricks. Personally, back in the day, I would actually use this block a lot because it was one of the only brick building blocks in the game. Unfortunately for the bricks though, it hasn't aged that well into the game today. You can use it for a cool banner pattern, and you can also craft it into its other variants like the slab stays or walls. But just looking at the brick for a building block itself, sadly for the brick, it's pretty low on the list. 561 is Chiseled Red Sandstone. This is another unique, cool decorative block that shows a little bit of the history of Minecraft, I feel. Like, if you inspect very, very closely on the chiseled red sandstone, it looks like there's a wither pattern on the side, which in my opinion, is very cool. It feels like there's an ancient history behind Minecraft. Number 560 is the chiseled sandstone. This block has the same kind of ancient history vibe like the last block, but in my opinion, it looks even cooler as it's normal sandstone, it has a creeper face on it, and at the bottom, it looks like there's some sort of hieroglyphs going on, which for decorational blocks, this is pretty cool. On the same theming, number 559 is the chiseled nether brick. Again, on the same topic as an ancient history, this block brings the same vibe with the nether. It's almost like people worship the wither skulls or something. I don't know. Ask, ask MathPat. MathPat probably knows. Other than these blocks having cool decorative features and looks, they have no other uses or purposes. Number 558 is the bone block. Now, these blocks are quite hard to find sometimes. When I go on my adventures through the nether, sometimes I pass the soul sand valleys and that's where I'll find these bone blocks. I'll then break all of these bone blocks because each individual bone block drops nine bone meal. Try saying that ten times fast. Whoo! Anyway, and then I'll use that bone meal for any of my farms. Number 557 is Polished Deep Slate. You can use four of these bad boys to actually craft deep slate bricks, and this block does offer a wide variation of slabs, stairs, walls. I tend to use this block whenever I want to decorate my cobbled deep slate strip mines. 556 is the Spore Blossom. This is a very unique block that was added with the Lush Caves. Not only is it a really cool decorative block and looks really pretty, you can actually use it in the composter with a 65% chance of raising the compost by one. Definitely a contender for one of Minecraft's most prettiest blocks, but you can only place this on the underside of a block, which I think is a bit of a waste. Number 555 is the mushroom step. Now these blocks can be generated when you turn a small mushroom into a giant mushroom, and these blocks are the components that build the giant mushrooms. The full blocks themselves can also be used in composters, with 65% chance to add a new layer. So other than that, they are only used for decoration purposes, but a mushroom house is so cool. I love a good old mushroom house. Number 554 is the brown mushroom block. This block spawns from the brown mushroom variant. And when you break these blocks, they do have a chance of dropping up to two mushrooms. It's a cool idea for a block, but in my opinion, it's still not as good as the red mushroom block. Number 553 is the heavy weighted pressure plate. This is one of our first main redstone components on the list. And it's first for a reason. I I do love redstone, and any block that brings even more redstone value to the table is a little bit of a win for me. But my goodness, is this block tedious and annoying to use. To get one signal strength out of this pressure plate, you need at least one entity, which is fair enough. One entity, one signal strength. But to get two, you need more than ten. You need eleven entities on these pressure plates just to get a signal strength of two. That is annoying. 552 is coral. Not to be confused with the coral fan, this coral is a type of non-solid block that comes in five variants. The tube, the brain, the bubble, the fire, and the horn. It can also die. R.I.P. Coral, you will be missed. These little guys naturally generate in the coral reefs which are found in the warm ocean biome. These guys are only obtainable by picking them up with silk touch, but it's a very nice and cute decorative block that you can use in things like oceans or aquariums. And just like the coral, number 551 is the coral block. This block comes in all five variations the coral comes in, but in block form. It can also die, which is sad. R.I.P. our friend, coral block. But nonetheless, these blocks are bright, vibrant, decorative blocks that you can use to build coral reefs in Minecraft. 550 is red sandstone itself. Now this is the red sandstone block itself that can be crafted or stone cut into many of its variants. The look of this block itself isn't as good as some other red sandstone blocks, but the fact that you can turn this block into many things like stairs, slabs, walls, bumps this block up quite a bit. And number 549 is sandstone. I definitely prefer the normal sandstone variant over the red sandstone, as the normal sandstone fits in with the desert better. Not only does this sandstone give you lots of variants, 
materials like slabs, stays, walls. This sandstone can actually be used to craft another dune armor trim, which in my opinion is a very nice touch. Number 548 is the nether bricks. Added in the very first full version of Minecraft Java Edition, these nether bricks form the walls and supporting pillars of all nether fortresses. These blocks can be used to create the nether fences, slabs, stairs, walls, and can be stone cut into these variations too, which gives this block a lot of variety for its usage. Although for this block, out of all of the nether bricks, this one isn't as vibrant as the others. I'm talking about the red nether brick. Number 547 is the deep slit tiles. Out of all of the cobble deep slit variants, this one is definitely one of my favorites. It's definitely one of the cleaner looking brick blocks, and it has so much variety and usage in builds. 546 is the block of raw gold. This block looks a little bit better than the block of raw copper, and it does have a significant better usage as you get a compact gold, which is actually, I'd say, a useful resource. Still though, personally, I would never craft these blocks. I would always just have a chest full of gold to show off all me riches. 545 is the block of raw iron. Now, for me, this block has the same problem. It doesn't look amazing, and the actual usage of compacting a resource never really works with me as I like my iron right there. But I guess, especially with the new 1.19 caves, you could find a lot of iron, which means if you want to compact it, you can. Number 544 is the small drip leaf. This is another cool, cute, decorative block. Since this block mainly comes from the overgrown lush caves, I like to use this block if I'm building anything overgrown. I just think this block is quite hard to acquire since it only spawns in lush caves. And even then, there are so many other better flowers to use decoratively, but the real main thing I'd use this block for is to bone meal it into a big drip leaf. Now we finally arrived at the D tier blocks. Number 543 is the azalea. The azalea added in 1.17 is a small little block like a sapling that can be grown into an azalea tree. Now the problem with this sapling and why it's so low on this list is because it doesn't actually grow automatically, which decoratively is a good thing because now you can have small bushes in your garden or in your pot. But functionally, if you're farming wood or you need wood to survive, this block isn't gonna help you out much. Number 542 is the flowering azalea. Now this counterpart to the normal azalea is much, much better. Because I normally use the azalea for decoration purposes only, this block just looks a little bit more polished and nicer. Just look at the little flowers on it. Ah, look at that little bush. 541 is mud. Yeah, we do like mud around here. Such a silly block. You can create the mud block by taking some water and using it on a dirt block. There you go, you got yourself some mud. Yum. Now, mud can go down a few paths. If you want to craft muddy mangrove roots, you can craft it with mangrove roots. And if you want to craft some packed mud, you can use some wheat. It also naturally generates in the mangrove swamp biome. So, you know, if you fancy using mud, Mud is in Minecraft. How, how awesome is that? Yeah, mud. Decoratively, you can use this build to build like a swampy, slimy hut. But other than that, it's mud. It pretty much says what it is on the package. Number 540 is the dead bush. Aesthetically, a great block to use in the desert if you have any desert builds. And also, this block actually drops sticks, which is very, very handy for speedrunners. And fun fact, dead bushes dropping sticks is based on a suggestion by Reddit user Pedroff1. Hey, the more you know. Also, this is another classic block from Java Edition beta added in 1.6. Number 539 is basalt itself. Added in version 1.16, basalt brings many things to the table. If you craft four basalt together, you can get four polished basalt. If you smelt basalt, you can get smooth basalt. And if you stone cut basalt, you can get polished basalt again. Basalt naturally generates as basalt pillars, which is pretty cool. They're found in the Soul Sand Valley and they can also be found in basalt deltas. Even with some of its versatile uses, basalt is a pretty ugly block. 538 is the Cave Vine Glow Berry. Just another decorative block block the spawns in the lush caves this this little guy actually drops glow berries as well. This is very cool because not only is this an edible plant, but this plant actually looks very cool decoratively. While eating one glow berry actually restores two hunger, which is very, very cool. Not only that though, but it actually gives off a light level of 14, which is pretty bright. You can use these berries to breed foxes as well. And if you want, you can place them in composters as well, but it only has a 30% chance of raising one level. Number 537 is the red mushroom block. Now decoratively, I absolutely adore this block simply for the fact that you can live in a mushroom. You can live in a mushroom. Like the mushroom smurf cat meme that just relatively became popular. I don't understand. That guy probably lives in a mushroom too. And that is why I love the red mushroom block. You can build cool, giant, massive mushrooms with it, and that is a win in my book. Number 536 is the brown mushroom. This little guy is an absolute classic. Added all the way back in update 0 0.1.0. That is very old. These guys can be found and placed in dark areas, like caves or even under trees. You can use this little guy to craft mushroom sticks 
stew, suspicious stew, rabbit stew, or a fermented spider eye. Those uses are pretty specific in some playthroughs, but the main talking point of this guy is if you use bone meal on them, you can turn them into a fully big mushroom. And these mushrooms look so cool. By the way, did I mention you could live in the mushroom? That is, that is awesome. Number 535 is the red mushroom. And all of the same things apply to the red mushroom, but in my opinion, the red mushroom is more superior to the brown mushroom. When you use bone meal on this mushroom to create a big mushroom, the mushroom is actually curved inwards, so it's pretty easier to make a... Guess what? It, it's easier to make a mushroom house. But not only that, you can actually harvest the red mushroom block by growing the red mushroom. Number 534 is the cracked deep slate bricks. Now, we're going to be talking about the cracked bricks, a variant of all bricks, but they, guess what? Have a crack. Decoratively, you want to use these guys if your build is quite old, overgrown. Maybe overstayed is welcome a little bit, and now it's forgotten in time. The cracked bricks can bring a lot to the table aesthetic-wise. So now I put them in order, but realistically, the cracked brick variant that applies best to your build is going to be the best cracked variant. So number 533 is cracked nether bricks. Use it for the nether. Number 532 is cracked polished blackstone bricks. Number 531 is cracked stone bricks. Number 530 is frog spawn. Nothing much you can do with this block, but it does spawn frogs. And that is awesome. We love little froggies. Number 529 is the mud brick. Now, out of all of the new mud, I feel like the mud brick is the one block you can actually use in builds. It actually looks good as a block, dare I say, and you could probably use it for a starter base. Number 528 is the pitcher plant. Decoratively, this new block looks very peculiar. What I didn't know, though, is this plant can actually be used to craft cyan dye. Other than that, though, this block is primarily used for decoration. The cool thing about this plant, though, is that it comes from the sniffers. Number 527 is the older sibling to the small drift leaf, the big drip leaf. This big guy is a plant that generates in the lush caves. The big drip leaf is a temporary platform. When you stand on it, it will tilt down and drop its burden, resetting a few seconds later. Which I think is a pretty cool mechanic for a block to have. Another cool thing about the drip leaf is that it can be locked with redstone, which means it can't actually fall with redstone. Which kind of makes it a redstone component, and you could probably build some funky traps with this. Number 526 is grass. You'll see this block everywhere while adventuring the landscapes of Minecraft. It's a simple effect effective decoration block because it's grass and it adds a nice aesthetic touch to all of the grass biomes. Number 525 is tall grass. This is the second variant to grass that is two blocks tall. I think decoratively wise, it does the same job as grass, but this time it's two blocks tall, just as tall as the player, and you can walk through it. Number 524 is the lily pad. First off, decoratively, this block looks amazing. When used on lakes or ponds, this block adds a nice aesthetic touch. And not to mention, you can use these to do water parkour. Heck yeah, woo, look at me go. You can acquire these blocks by just breaking them, or you can find them while fishing. And while you have them, you can compost them if you want for a 65% chance of going up a level by one. Number 523, the pearlescent frog light. The frog light is a new unique light source in Minecraft. You get these in the most bizarre way. When a magma cube is eaten by a frog, whatever color that frog is, it will drop its corresponding frog light. For the pearlescent variant, a warm frog will drop this variant. They emit a light level of 15, which is the highest possible light emitting block. All of these features are cool, but for me, decoratively wise, the frog light kind of falls short. It has these strange looking wrinkles on the block, which can add to it. For me personally, this isn't my go-to light. And out of all of the variants, the last one I would use is the pearlescent purple variant. Number 500. 22 is the ochre frog light. This block is dropped by the temperature frog when they eat a magma cube. Better than the pearlescent frog light, in my opinion, the ochre frog light has a nice orange tint to it. But for me, it's still not as cool as 521, the verdant frog light. This variant is dropped by the cold frog. And for me personally, as I'm a big fan of the color green, could you guess? I don't know if I made it obvious enough. This is definitely my favorite frog light, but simply because of the color. Number 520 is tinted glass. Crafted with amethyst shards and glass, this tinted glass can block out light. Goodbye, light. Which, to be honest, is a pretty cool function for glass in-game to have. Number 519 is the zombie head. There are currently seven head blocks in Minecraft. And to be honest, having these heads with a little bit of redstone as blood are pretty cool decorative blocks. You could be the zombie slayer, slayer of all zombies, and all of the heads are on the walls. It looks pretty cool. But for those who don't actually know or never played Minecraft before, but if you've never played Minecraft before, I don't know if why you're watching this video, you should definitely go play Minecraft 
first and then come back to this video. Zombies don't actually drop their heads from dying. You need a charged creeper to blow them up, then they'll drop their head. Another really cool feature that comes with this block is you can actually disguise yourself from the corresponding mob. If I'm wearing the zombie head, it reduces the detection range of that zombie by 50%, which is pretty cool. But to be honest, I'd rather be wearing armor just to stay safe. Number 518 is the skeleton skull. Like the zombie head, the exact same thing goes for the skeleton skull. It's a really cool decorative block, but why I think the skeleton skull is better than the zombie head is because you can use the skeleton skull as a normal player's skull. This is really useful in horror maps because it looks like someone's head has come off and rotted away into a skull. Although with these heads, it does come down to preference. They're all very similar in terms of usage. Number 517 is the creeper head. Personally for me though, I prefer the creeper head because I love the way the creeper looks. It's such an iconic part of Minecraft. And if I have this head on my wall, it looks like I'm the creeper slayer. Yeah! <laughs> Pay back for those creepers blow up my house, stupid creepers. Not to mention, you can use the creeper head to actually create the creeper charge pattern banner. Very cool. Number 516 is the piglin head. Now, there's a very specific reason why I put this above the other three. is because if you power this guy with redstone, it's years flap. Look at them go. Look at them. Look at the years. That is so cool. Ah, silly piggy. Not only that, though. When you put it on your head, they flap as well. What? Look at them go. If you also put the mob head on top of note blocks, it'll play a sound from those mobs. This is actually very cool. Number 515 is dark prismarine. Now, this block wouldn't be as high on the list if it wasn't one of the first blocks on this list that can activate a conduit. For me personally, the dark prismarine isn't as good as prismarine or prismarine bricks just because it's so dark. Number 514 is the gilded blackstone. This cool looking variant of blackstone is found exclusively in Bastion Remnants. Now this block actually has a 10% chance to drop two to five gold nuggets when mined. With fortune one, this increases to 14.29%. With fortune two, it increases to 25%. And with fortune three, you guarantee the gold nugget drop. Yes! Number 513 is the Cauldron. Added in Java Edition version 1, the Cauldron is a block that can contain water, lava, or powdered snow. This block actually has a few uses. To start in Bedrock Edition, a Cauldron can hold normal portions, splash portions, and lingering portions. Then using an arrow on that Cauldron that contains a portion transforms the arrow into a tipped arrow. The Cauldron can be used to farm lava with dripstone. Another feature in Bedrock Edition is the leather armor can be dyed using a Cauldron. But the main reason I'd use a Cauldron on Java Edition was to illegally take water into the nether so when I was on fire, I could put it out. Although buckets can now hold powdered snow, so the Cauldron isn't as useful as it used to be. Number 512 is the dropper. Now the main use of the dropper is to simply drop items with redstone. But a secondary use you can use droppers for is to use item pipes so you can transport items up, down, left or right. Although water does this a lot better. So the only time you'd really need these item pipes were if you were building a farm in the nether. Number 511 is the block of amethyst. The block of amethyst is a block found in geodes or crafted from amethyst shards. A cool feature about this block though is that it can copy and repeat vibrations received by skull sensors. When you pick these blocks up by mining it with any pickaxe, you can place them down and it'll make a little sound like beep boop beep beep. And then when you walk back over them, they make even more sounds. Whee! It's a pretty cool purple decorative block as well, which I love. Number 510 and our second villager workstation is the fletching table. You could definitely use this block in a decorative way, but its current main purpose is to create a fletching villager. And with this villager, you can get some good deals. You can turn sticks into emeralds, flint into emeralds, string into emeralds, or feathers into emeralds. Number 509 is the sweet berry. This sweet berry bush is very unique because once it grows to its full size, it will carry on growing berries until the day you die. So not only is it a good decorative block that works with a lot of spruce builds, but this little block can give you quick, easy, infinite snacks. Number 508 and one of my favorite nether building blocks is the red nether brick. This block can be crafted with two nether warts and two nether bricks, and it is simply a decorative building block. It can be crafted or stone cut into its slabs, stairs, or walls variants. And unlike the normal nether brick, the red nether brick is more vibrant, flashy, and cool. Number 507 is the cartography table. This block is a utility block used for cloning, zooming out, and locking maps. It is also our third villager job block and can be used to create the cartographer villager. Crafted with two paper and four planks, the cartographer table is any adventurer's best friend. 
I personally tend to never use this block like at all and that's why it's pretty low on this list. Although it does create the cartographer which has a few decent traits like paper to emeralds, glass paint to emeralds and compasses to emeralds. Number 506 is the polished blackstone brick. Now we are slowly getting to some of my personal favorite building bricks like the polished blackstone bricks. I just think this brick is very clean, polished and smooth and definitely a good building option if you have loads of blackstone laying around. Not to mention you can craft slab stays, wall variants or you can smelt it to have cracks on it. Number 505 is the deep slit bricks. The superior block to the polished blackstone bricks is the deep slit brick. If you look at them side by side, the deep slit brick just looks way cleaner, smoother, and just way more polished. Not to mention it has the same uses so you can just craft better blocks, and it can also be smelted to give it some cracks. Number 504 is the skulk catalyst. It's a very unique block because if any mob dies within 8 blocks of the skulk catalyst, the skulk catalyst blooms giving off soul particles and creates a patch of skulk with skulk veins around that location. which means with enough dead mobs, the Skulk can completely take over your world. Run for your life. The Skulk can take over a lot of blocks. Just look at this list. But with all of this Skulk comes all of this good XP. Just mine it all with a hole and you'll be dandy. Number 503 is clay. Clay itself could possibly have a few uses, like garden paths or for its specific color palette. But another reason clay is really cool is that you can smelt it down into terracotta. Clay can now generate as well in large quantities on the floor of ponds in lush caves. And when you mine clay, it drops clay balls, which inevitably leads to bricks. Number 502 is gravel. <sighs> I can't choose between this block. On one hand, when I'm mining, gravel keeps falling on top of me and it is the most annoying thing ever. But on the other hand, gravel leads to flint, which can get me into the nether and save my life getting me out of the nether. It can also lead to concrete powder, which leads to concrete blocks. And also, if you have enough gravel, you can mix it with dirt to create even more dirt, which has caused it. So I've placed this block here. I feel like it fits here because it can be so annoying because it's gravity affected, but also it can do some cool things. Number 501 is the mangrove leaves. But quickly, we're going to talk about leaves in general. So all of the leaves in Minecraft are very pretty decorative blocks. And these blocks can add instant amazing aesthetic if used properly with any build. They could be used to build giant hedges or maybe even giant trees. There are many, many different leaves in Minecraft and all of them have their own purposes. And I have ranked them all in order of what I personally use, but realistically, all the leaves have their own individual uses, so it depends how you use them. So that's why 501 for me personally is the mangrove leaves. 500 is the birch leaves. 499 is the azalea leaves. 498 is the spruce leaves. 497 is the oak leaves 496 is the dark oak leaves 495 is the jungle leaves 494 is the acacia leaves 493 is the flowering azalea 492 is the cherry leaves my personal favorite out of all of the leaves they have their own particle effect which is so cool moving on number 491 is the warped trap door this guy is at the bottom of the barrel of all of the wooden trap doors but that's not anything bad because it comes down to pressure reference what wooden trapdoor you use. The wooden trapdoor can be crafted with six planks on the bottom half of the crafting table. It's such a cool decorative block that you can use for like little hidey holes. The wooden trapdoors can be opened by players by simply just right clicking on the block. But not only that, the wooden trapdoor is actually a redstone component. If anything is connected to it, it can open and close. A quote unquote secret use the trapdoor does that isn't that secret anymore. It can actually be used on players to make them crawl through one by one block holes, which I think is a pretty cool feature to have. Now what wooden trapdoor you use just comes down to a building preference so all of them really are the same but this is my personal opinion. Number 490 is the crimson trapdoor. The second nether trapdoor that I personally am not going to use over the other trapdoors. Number 489 is the acacia trapdoor. Number 488 is the birch trapdoor. Number 487 is the jungle trapdoor. Number 486 is the bamboo trapdoor. Number 485 is the cherry trapdoor. Number 484 is the oak trapdoor. Number 483 is the dark oak trapdoor. I personally think the trapdoors where you can't see through them actually have more decorative uses, like you can use this on the side of a bunk bed. Number 482 and my favorite trapdoor is the spruce trapdoor. Just like the dark oak trapdoor where you can't see anything through, the spruce trapdoor has that extra nudge over the other trapdoors. Number 481 is the nether brick fence. Now out of all of the fences, the nether brick fence is the only one that isn't actually made out of wood. So let's quickly talk about the fence in general. The fence is a solid block, cheap and easy to 
use and make. Even though it's one block tall, you can't actually jump over it, which is very useful because you can use this to keep mobs inside of. You can actually see through the openings in the fence, unlike the walls, which is pretty cool. And if you'd like to pop a carpet on top of the fence, you can use that then to hop back and forth in and out of pens while mobs actually can't. Another awesome feature is that you can tie mobs on leads to fences. Look at this little guy. Look at these little bumbly boys flying away. They're big bee balloons. What are they doing? As for the nether brick fence itself, it's the old one out. It doesn't stand out. And in my opinion, it's the worst fence. But again, it's all preference depending on what your build is or how you use the fence. Number 480 is the crimson fence. You'll start to notice a pattern with wood that I'm not the biggest fan of the nether wood. But saying that, I do actually like the idea of blue wood. So number 479 is mangrove fence. This block looks very similar to the crimson fence, so that's why it's pretty low. Number 478 is acacia fence. Now, personally, acacia isn't one of my favorite woods, so that's why it's down here. Number 477 is the warped fence. Now, even though I said I didn't like nether wood, I actually do like the idea of having a unique colored wood like the color blue. Number 476 is dark oak fence. Now that we're getting to all of the classic woods, for me, they are all very close to each other. I can't really decide between them, so I had to just check dark oak here. But bear in mind, it is quite hard to choose between the woods because they're also good. Well, some of the woods anyway. Crimson kind of smells. Number 475 is the jungle fence. For me personally, the jungle wood color and shade is a nicer color and shade than the acacia wood because it's a lot more subtle. Number 474 is the spruce fence. Again, I prefer spruce over dark oak because the color is a little bit more subtle. Number 473 is the cherry fence. I'd be lying if I didn't say that I'm a massive huge fan of the new cherry wood. It's just so awesome. Again, it's such a unique color for wood and a nice shade of pink. Number 472 is the York Fence. I have to come back to my roots and say this is probably one of my favorite wood just because it's the classic, iconic wood of Minecraft. Maybe I'm a little biased because of nostalgia, but this wood is just, yes. Number 471, and my favorite fence is the Bamboo Fence. I really didn't expect this to be my favorite fence, but checking this block out, having the bamboo shoots itself as the actual fence is really cool and a very nice, unique, aesthetically pleasing touch. So yeah, those are all of my favorite fences, but also this is kind of how I'm going to rank wood throughout the video. So next time I'm ranking any of the woods, there's going to be a similar ranking, but not the exact same. Number 470 is the Azure Bluet. Even though every flower has its own craft and purpose, let's quickly touch on flowers in general. No one can deny that all of the flowers in Minecraft are amazing decorative blocks. Not only do they spice up and give a nice aesthetic touch to any Minecraft build, but they all come in different shapes, sizes, and variants. Most flowers naturally generate on dirt and grass blocks. But for the Azul Bluet, it can spawn in plains, sunflower fields. On Java Edition, it can actually spawn in dripstone caves and the deep dark. It can spawn in the flower forest and the meadow, but nowhere else. Out of all of the flowers, the reason why the Bluet is so low is because it can craft light gray dye, which isn't an amazing color itself, and also it's not the best looking block. If you craft the Bluet into Suspicious Stew, you'll actually get blindness for 8 seconds on Java and 6 seconds on Bedrock Edition. But I don't know why you'd want to be blind, so you should definitely give this to someone else. Number 469 is the Allium. This little flower was added in 1.7.2 with the rest of the unique flowers added to the game. It can only be found in the flower forest in the meadow, and if you add the Allium to Suspicious Dew, it will reward you with fire resistance for 4 seconds. The Allium can also be crafted into Magenta Dye, which in my opinion is a great vibrant colour. I also forgot to mention with all of these flowers, bees actually use them to make honey, which is also a nice extra plus for all of these different flowers. Number 468 is the Oxide Daisy. This cute block is similar to the bluet. The oxide daisy can, can be crafted into light gray dye. It can be found in the plains, sunflower plains, flower forest, and the meadow, and also on Java Edition in the dripstone caves and the deep duck. The reason why this is higher than the bluet is the flower just looks a lot cleaner and better. When I look at the bluet, I don't really know what's going on, but when I look at the oxide daisy, I know instantly, yep, yeah, that's a flower. That's a pretty, that's a pretty generic flower, but it's a flower nonetheless. Mixed into a suspicious stew, the oxide daisy can give you regeneration for six seconds on bedrock or 8 seconds on Java Edition. Number 467 is the Cornflower. The Cornflower is used to give a nice vibrant blue dye and mixed in with the Suspicious Stew, the Cornflower will give you jump boost for 4 seconds on Bedrock and 6 seconds on Java. It can be found in the exact same places as the Oxide Daisy. Number 466 is the Dandelion. One of the absolute classic flowers added all the way back in version 
0.020 of Java Edition Classic. This flower will give you a nice vibrant yellow dye, and with a suspicious stew, it will weirdly give you saturation for 0.3 seconds. And what's even weirder is on Java Edition, it's 0.35 seconds? That is such a random decision to make. Either way, a cool little cute block. Number 465 is the Poppy. Added with the Dandelion all the way back in Classic Java Edition, the Poppy gives a nice red vibrant dye. But this time, in a suspicious two, the Poppy will give you night vision for four seconds on Bedrock and five seconds on Java. Number 464 is the Sunflower. Our first flower on this flower list that is actually two blocks tall. Like the Dandelion, the Sunflower gives you a nice vibrant yellow dye, but doesn't actually give you an effect with suspicious two. But it makes up for this being a unique two block tall flower. Look at all the sunflowers. You can create a massive sunflower field, and I think that is awesome. Another two block tall flower that can't actually create anything in the suspicious stew is the peony. I simply think this flower is better decorative wise over the sunflower. It's a big, pretty flower bush that fits in with any garden build. And it also gives you pink dye. Number 462 is Lily of the Valley. Lily of the Valley will simply give you white dye. You can use this dye to erase anything off your banners, which is pretty cool. But not only that, when crafted into suspicious stew, the Lily of the Valley will give you 10 seconds of poison on bedrock and 10 seconds of poison on Java Edition, which I think is a Breaking Bad reference. No, 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 no. Lily of the Valley was invented in Breaking Bad. I refuse to... 461 is the Rose Bush. The Rose Bush is another two block tall flower that gives you some red dye. I chose this over the peony because I prefer the color red. I know. 460 is the Liliac. The Liliac, again, is another two block tall flower, but this time it gives you magenta dye. Now, me personally, I prefer magenta over pink and red because it's just more vibrant. I, I prefer I prefer magenta over pink. I know. It's shocking news. 459 is the torch flower. For me personally, I'd say this is one of the most unique flowers. Added in the new version of Minecraft, the torch flower actually looks like a torch. It would be cool if it emitted some light, but I personally still think this is one of the cooler looking flowers. Not only does it give you orange dye, which is a nice vibrant color, but it also gives you the same night vision a poppy would give you while crafting into a suspicious stew. Number 458 is the blue orchid. I love the blue orchid. I think it's one of the most vibrant looking flowers and it gives you a nice light blue dye and when mixed in with suspicious stew This is one of the flowers that weirdly gives you saturation for 0.3 seconds number 457 is the orange tulip our first tulip on this list when mixed in with suspicious stew All of the tulips will give you weakness for seven seconds on bedrock or nine seconds on Java I just think the tulip is such a simple yet effective flower It does the job while just looking nice and tidy also this guy gives orange dye number 456 is the pink tulip again Simple yet effective like the orange tulip, but this time pink. It also gives pink dye in case you couldn't tell. Number 455 is the white tulip. Some would say this is bland, but for me, again, it's simple, effective, and just looks clean and tidy. 454 is the red tulip. Out of all of the tulips, this one is my favorite because it's the most vibrant. I'm also a little biased because I do love the color red, but hey, what can you do? And my favorite flower is number 453, the pink petal. I love this new type of flower where you can just scatter them all across the grass and stack them on top of each other to add such a nice aesthetically pleasing look to any biome. These work especially well in obviously the cherry blossom biome. We're finally moving up the tier list to tier C. Number 452 is the granite stays. Before I touch on the granite stays themselves, let's talk about stays and how great they are. Not only are stays a fantastic decorative block that can build you things like roofs and stays themselves, but stays are stays, you know? They allow you to change elevation without jumping and with complete ease. If you place these bad boys down, they can simply get you from point A to point B in no time. I gotta say, I'm a big fan of the fact that if you place stays in a row, you can actually turn a stay block into a corner stay block just by changing the direction they move in. That is a very nice touch. Stays are crafted with six of their respective block in a crafting table like this. And with any kind of stone, they can also be stone cut into stays as well. Overall, great block. Now, you know how I feel about some of the blocks themselves, like granite, for example. Not a fan of granite, so that's why granite stays are the lowest. But now I'm gonna quickly go through and rank every single stays, but all of this is based on pure looks. Now, I'm not gonna stop and blab about the block, because I've either ranked the block itself, or I'm going to rank the block itself coming up. 451 is Andesite Stays. 450 is Diorite Stays. 
449 is waxed, weathered, cut, copper stays. That's a tongue twister. 448 is exposed, cut, copper stays. 447 is weathered, cut, copper stays. 446 is wax, exposed, cut, copper stays. 445 is dark, prismarine stays. 444 is prismarine stays. 443 is red, sandstone stays. 442 is sandstone stays. 441 is oxidized cut copper stays. 440 is waxed oxidized cut copper stays. 439 is polished blackstone stays. 438 is blackstone stays. 437 is mossy cobblestone stays. 436 is prismarine brick stays. 435 is crimson stays. 434 is cobbled deep slit stays. 433 is smooth red sandstone stays. 432 is smooth sandstone stays. 431 is polished granite stays, 430 is polished andesite stays, 429 is polished diorite stays, 428 is polished deep slate stays, 427 is polished blackstone brick stays, 426 is nether brick stays, 425 is red nether brick stays. I sound the same every gosh dang time. 424 is deep slate tile stays. Yeah, that's so much more enthusiastic. 423 is end stone brick stays, 422 is purple stays. 421 is cut copper stays. 420 is wax cut copper stays. 419 is mossy stone brick stays. 418 is cobblestone stays. 417 is mud brick stays. 416 is the brick stays. 415 is warped stays. 414 is stone stays. 413 is quartz stays. 412 is smooth quartz stays. 411 is mangrove stays. I sound like a rapid. Yeah, yeah. 410 is acacia stays. 409 is jungle stays. 408 is a bamboo stays. 407 is the dark oak stays. 406 is the spruce stays. 405 is the cherry stays. 404 is the birch stays. 403 is the bamboo moisiac stays. Because these guys actually look cool. They got a cool pattern. Anyway, back to the rap. 402 is the deep slit brick stays. Clean. 401 is the yoke stays. 400 is the stone brick stays. Woo! Guys, I promise I won't do all of that with all of the slabs. You now know the order of all the block types, so we'll fast forward through the slabs when we get there. We gotta finish off with the stone brick stays. I personally love the stone brick stays, and I've probably used them out of the stays the most. A nice, clean, polished, good-looking block. Number 399 is our first slab, and that's the granite slab. Ah, the Minecraft slab. It's a helpful decorative block that has so many uses, and some would argue more uses than the stays. Now, the reason why slabs is above stays is because slabs can do everything stays can do. With slabs, you can make longer stays to walk up without jumping. And also, if you fancy, you can make roofs with slabs. But mainly, the slab is used as a half block to make builds look better. But it also has some extra perks, like mobs cannot spawn on the bottom half of a slab. This is really handy on things like sky blocks or just anywhere you don't want mobs to spawn. Another cool thing is the redstone dust placed on top of a slab receives signal from redstone dust one block lower and adjacent. So this block also adds a little bit of value to redstone as well. Not to mention the best part of a slab is if you put a slab on top of a slab, it creates a full block. Isn't that so awesome? Jokes aside though, wooden slabs can actually craft really useful things like lecterns, barrels, grindstones, composters, and even the new chiseled bookshelf. So with all of that out of the way, you guys already know my block preferences, so there's no point me blabbing on about every single order of all of the slabs since I just did that with the stays. It's fast forward in time, baby. Let's go. Woo! And finally, number 345 is the stone brick slab. This is my favorite slab for the exact same reason stone brick stays is my favorite stays. So, nothing much to touch on here, let's move on to the next block. Number 344 is the shroom light. This light emitting block gives off a light level of 15, which is the highest light level a block can give. But not only that, if you need a light source in the nether with any nether based build, this block is probably perfect for you, because it's so easy to harvest and obtain. Number 343 is the chiseled quartz blocks. Finally arriving at our first quartz blocks, the chiseled quartz block has unique patterns on every single side. This block is mainly only used for decoration or displaying purposes, but the fact that you can use this in any quartz builds, it's definitely up there. As for me personally, quartz is definitely one of the better construction blocks. Number 342 is seagrass. This is a pretty self-explanatory block. Look at these guys go. It's the grass of the sea. It can come in one block tall or two block tall variants. This block can be used to breed turtles together and make a baby turtle. 
Oh, but look at that little guy. He's so small and cute. Aww. Aww. I'm getting a bit distracted now, but that is a great use for a block. Not only that, it can be used in composters of 30% chance of raising the compost by one level for all those gardeners out there. And it's a very nice decorative block for any water builds like an aquarium, for example. Number 341 is the sea pickle. Yeah. This tiny little guy is a small block that emits light underwater. And typically, this little guy can be found in colonies of up to four little sea pickles. Sea pickles naturally generate on the bottom of water oceans and can be found on top of coral blocks in coral reefs. The more sea pickles you stack on top of each other, the more light they'll give. The sea pickle actually has an amazing use, and that's why I love the sea pickle so much. If you smelt the sea pickle, it will give you lime die. Number 340 is prismarine bricks. Although actually I do think this block decoratively wise looks better than prismarine itself, the prismarine bricks unfortunately fall a little bit short on usage as the prismarine block themselves have a little bit more uses. Number 339 is prismarine, one of the other structural blocks that sets off the conduit. The real cool thing about prismarine is it's actually an animated texture which is a nice touch. In the most recent update of Minecraft with the armor trims, prismarine can now be used to craft the tight armor trim as well. Although even though it has all of these cool features, it's still not the best decorative block, but a cool block nonetheless. Number 338 is the purple pillar. The purple blocks are just one of those blocks that just feel so random. Like what is a purple? Although don't get me wrong, I'm all on board with this funkiness. It's a funky purple block that just kind of adds a little bit more variety to the building in Minecraft. The purple pillar itself isn't as smooth as the normal purple blocks. They have these rigid edges, but with the purple pillar, you can craft stairs, but only in Java Edition can you use purple pillars to create the slabs. That's why number 337 is the purple block itself. Decorative wise, the purple block and the purple pillar are very similar blocks, but with the purple block, you can actually craft the spire armor trim, which is pretty cool. Number 336 is snow. This block has a very cool gimmick. You can stack snow on top of snow up to eight times. Doing this, you'll change the thickness of the snow level until you reach one full snow block. A cool thing about snow is that it actually melts depending on the environment it's in. So if there's a heat block or a light level of 12 or more, the snow will actually melt. And not to mention, this block absolutely thrives on any festive Minecraft build. Number 335 is the snow block. This block is actually just eight of the layers on top of each other to create one big snow block. But the cool thing is, with the snow blocks, if you put them into a crafting table in a line, you can actually turn them back into snow. Not to mention, with these snow blocks, you can actually put two of them on top of each other and one pumpkin to create a little snow golem. Look at him go! He'll defend you with his life and throw snowballs at mobs, which is awesome. Number 334 is the lightning rod. Crafted with three copper ingots in a row, the lightning rod can be placed in a world, so when a lightning storm comes, the lightning will hit the rod. Since this diverts the lightning to actually hit the rod, you can then use this to strike mobs with lightning to create a charged creeper, for example. And one really cool feature about the lightning rod is when it's struck with lightning, it actually emits a redstone signal. Number 333 is the sea lantern. Crafted with prismarine shards and crystals, the sea lantern is not only a great light emitting block, which emits a light level of 15, which is the brightest possible in the game, but you can actually activate a conduit with this block. Definitely the coolest block to activate a conduit with. Another really cool random thing is that if you place a note block on top of the sea lantern, it'll make a clicks and sticks sound. Yeah, mm, yeah, yeah, ooh, yeah. Number 331 is the bee's nests, and number 330 is the beehive. These two blocks absolutely go hand in hand together. Both of these blocks actually house bees, with the bees' nests being natural and the beehives being crafted. The bees' nests that naturally generate all always generate with three bees inside of them. This is great because the more bees we have, the more honey we can produce. So both of these blocks really do help generate honey, which honey can lead to a lot of useful things. And that is why I'd say both of these blocks are really useful and in some instances can be used very decoratively. Number 329 is the brand new bamboo mosaic. Since bamboo is now a really, really useful block and we'll get to that later, the bamboo mosaic comes in handy when building out of bamboo. It's a decorative block with cool funky patterns on each side and can actually actually be used to create the bamboo mosaic stairs and the bamboo mosaic slabs. Number 328 is the chiseled stone bricks. Now this is one of the highest chisel blocks on our list. One of the reasons is being because it actually looks really cool with the square inside of the square pattern. But also it has a really cool use where if you craft eight of these blocks with one expensive netherite ingot, you can actually get yourself a lodestone. And we'll get to that block in a little bit. Number 327 is cocoa beans. These blocks can be naturally found on the side of jungle logs. 
logs. And when on the side of jungle logs, they can actually grow into big cocoa beans. When you harvest them at full size, you can then actually use them to craft brown dye and cookies. Now, how can you say no to cookies? Cookies are awesome. Number 326 is the mossy cobblestone. Added all the way back in Java Edition Classic in version 0.26 survival test, the mossy cobblestone was added as a variant of the normal cobblestone with guess what? Moss on it. You can use this block to create its slab, stairs, or wall variants, of course. Towards autumn or fall for the Americans, this block shines as well because it has a very spooky aesthetic to it. Great for Halloween fun and spooks. Admittedly, this block would be a lot lower on the ranking, but it has a new use to create the wild armor trim. Number 325 is the light block. This block's sole purpose is to really be used for creative builds and adventure maps. Although this block does come in handy when you're building adventure maps, you'll never come across it in your normal survival playthrough, which definitely keeps this block in the middle of the road because it only really has specific uses. Number 324 is the light weighted pressure plate. Unlike the heavy weighted pressure plate, the light weighted pressure plate doesn't need my entire village on the pressure plate just to admit a redstone signal strength of one. The light weighted pressure plate emits it's a signal strength of how many entities is on this pressure plate. For example, five mobs on the pressure plate, a signal strength of five, which is a pretty cool, nice feature to have. Number 323 is the iron trap door. Now, the main feature of the iron trap door is unlike wooden trap doors, you can't actually open it with your bare hands. So any way you use this, this will ensure a little bit more protection. Since now, unless players have a pickaxe to break through it, they're now gonna have to find a way to open it via redstone. Another really cool thing iron trap doors can do, I don't know if it's every trap door, but iron trap doors can place songs like this song. <laughs> Number 322 is End Stone. As soon as you enter the final stage of Minecraft, you can see thousands and thousands of these blocks, which means as long as you have a pickaxe at that point, you can mine these up and start using them. Four endstone together can create four endstone bricks, and they can also be stone cut into stairs, slabs, or the bricks, which gives these blocks a nice versatile use. But not only that, you can use endstone to craft the eye armor trim. Decoratively wise, these blocks are always at the center of every end looking build. Number 321 is the sponge. Not only does this block look like some cheese, cheese, this block has a very unique property and use. If you place sponge in water, it will absorb every single piece of water within a seven block radius. Then after that, the sponge will obviously turn into a wet sponge block, and then you can smelt the wet sponge back into a normal sponge. I'd say this block would be higher up on this list if it was easier to obtain. As to obtain the sponges, you need to reach an ocean monument and find a sponge room. Or if you kill an elder guardian, they will always drop one wet sponge. Number 320 is the vines. Decoration aside for a second, this block is actually very useful because you can use it to stop fall damage and to climb up and down structures. Naturally spawning in jungles, swamps, and lush caves, you can grab these vines for yourself with shears. But not only do they have a useful function, on the decorative side of things, these vines are great for any build that's overgrown or old because these vines actually naturally spread on their own, which is a very nice feature for a decorative block to have. Number 319 is the sniffer egg. This block is quite literally a giant egg. It looks really cool. If you didn't know a sniffer was going to come out of this egg, you'd have no idea what was. Maybe a dinosaur, maybe a giant pig. Who knows? It's a really cool looking block. Eventually, this egg will start to crack and eventually hatch into little baby snifflets. Number 318 is the tripwire hook. Possibly one of our first troll blocks. Hmm. Because you could place this in your friend's base without them knowing and as soon as they trip over this, it is game over. You could probably, you know, blow up their entire house or do something a little bit more minor like, like set off fireworks in their house. Whee! Either way, this is a very fun block to play pranks on your friends. Also, it could be used for a kind of lever or hook on the wall decoratively, which is a nice touch. Number 317 is the end rod, a really bizarre and unique light source. It's one long white stick with a purple stand at the bottom that emits light. The way this block is modeled, you can use it in a lot of cool decorative funky ways. But one really cool feature about this is you can wear this on your head like a unicorn. Look at me go, woo! Number 316 is the soul lantern. I absolutely adore the lantern as a decorative block and a light source. This block has so many uses. It can sit nicely on a block and look really aesthetically pleasing, or it can hang from a fence all the way to a chain. 
Now the Soul Lantern variant is the blue variant. In my opinion, it just doesn't look quite as good as number 315, the Normal Lantern. The Normal Lantern is just a little bit more aesthetically pleasing simply because the light inside of the lantern is a normal flame color. Number 314 is Iron Bars. Iron Bars is a cool decorative block that can be used to create jail cells. When you place these iron bars and then place them on the side, they can actually connect together and form an L shape, which is a nice touch because then the iron bars give you a little bit more space within the block. The iron bars actually have a secret use that I actually didn't know until I researched for this video. Iron bars speed up the cure duration for zombie villagers. I honestly did not know this at all. If you guys knew this, comment down below. I was definitely left scratching my head with this one. I honestly had no idea, but I mean, it kind of makes sense since zombie villagers can naturally be found in igloos behind iron bars. Number 313 is the structure void. This is an unobtainable block to get in survival, but a really, really cool decorative block to use in any cool builds that you're gonna make in creative mode. It's like A, it's like an invisible block, but you can place blocks on top of this block. For example, you could create all of the floating candles from Harry Potter. That is pretty cool. Number 312 is Crying Obsidian. Oh no, Obsidian, what's the matter? <laughs> I'm so sorry, where were we? Yes, Crying Obsidian. Crying Obsidian is a luminous variant of Obsidian that can be used to create a respawn anchor. The Crying Obsidian gives off a light level of 10, which isn't the highest, and is a nice decorative block to mix up any Obsidian build. Number 311 is Deep Slit Emerald. Now, a lot of people might be very confused why our first ore is very low down. That's simply because this ore is impossible to find. I don't think I've ever found Deep Slit Emerald. And I've 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 played a lot of Minecraft, not, not to be ashamed. That's nothing to be ashamed of. Even though this block does drop emeralds, and that is a good thing, emeralds are way easier to acquire just by simply trading. Like, I'd rather trade, like, 12 string for an emerald rather than go looking for Deep Slit Emeralds. And that is why 310 is Emerald Ore. The same points that stood for Deep Slit Emerald Ore also stand for Emerald Ore. This block is 30 times rarer than the Diamond Ore. That is, like, impossible. Possible. Although again, don't get me wrong, it is good finding this block. I would I would never turn down an emerald. Our second ore on this list is the deep slit copper ore. Unlike the emerald ore, this is actually the only way you're gonna be able to get copper. Now the reason why this ore is so low is because it's copper. It doesn't have as many uses as all the other resources in Minecraft. And plus, when I'm in a deep slit cave, I want to find other ores other than deep slit copper ore, you know? Although when you do have copper, it can be used to make a brush, lightning rods, spy glasses, and even used as a color for the new armor trims. Number 308 is copper ore. Just like deep slit copper ore, when you break this block, it'll give you raw copper. I've put this block above the deep slit variant because the normal copper ore seems to be everywhere on the surface. Number 307 is the coral fan. Now this cute decorative block is all the way up here on the list, probably not for the reason that you expect. The times I've actually used this block isn't for decoration or anything like that. It was actually to duplicate TNT. Now using coral fans to duplicate TNT is extremely useful because you can then go on to create machines that can mine automatically for diamonds. Number 306 is the honeycomb block. Now, just like the last one, you might be wondering why this block is so high. It is literally just a decorative block. Well, technically, yes, but because this block can't be fully mined quickly with any tool, it gave creative thinkers an opportunity to create a player trap. You can use pistons to carry on pushing these blocks around to trap the player inside and they can't mine anything. Kind of an OP trap if you ask me. Number 305 is the Amethyst Cluster. Once this block is fully grown, this is where you're gonna get all of your Amethyst Crystals from. Also, the decorativeness of this block works wonders when placed in mines, because then you could have a really cool crystal mine. Each stage of the Amethyst Cluster actually gives off its own light level as well, with the small being a light level of 1, the medium being a light level of 2, and a large Amethyst Bud giving off the light level of 4. Number 304 is the Budding Amethyst. After talking about the amethyst clusters for so long, you might be wondering where they actually come from. These clusters actually grow from the budding amethyst blocks. So since this block actually grows the amethyst clusters, it's a little bit ahead. Number 303 is glazed terracotta. Now this is a fantastic, unique decorative block as every single color has their own unique different colors and patterns. But not only that, if you place these blocks in a 2x2, two two, all of the patterns actually join together and create one big giant pattern. Which I personally think is a great creative idea for a Minecraft block. Half the time when I use this block, they always end up as my floor. Don't know why, but they're very cool patterns. Number 302 is Normal Terracotta. Now this block can actually be dyed in all 16 different colors. Which is cool, but it's not actually the main reason why it's up here. The main point is, not only can you use Terracotta for more of a bland colored palette, 
but you can actually smelt down terracotta into glazed terracotta. And on top of that, you can actually craft terracotta to create the Wayfinder armor trim. Even more reasons to use terracotta. Number 301 is the bell. Yeah, I don't know what to tell you. This is the bell and it's quite, it's, it's very funny. Not only does this bell make a funny ding dong ding dong sound, sound the alarms, but when a raid starts and you ring the bell, you just watch all of the villagers frantically run to their beds. I don't know why it's so funny. Decoratively, the bell is also a nice touch to any village you build. Number 300 is the Soul Torch. This block just has such a cool vibe about it. I don't know what it is, but after using the normal torch for so long, then the Soul Torch coming in, having a blue torch in Minecraft, that is just so cool. The reason why these aren't as high as the normal torches is because of the practicality. It's so much harder to craft these as you actually need soul soil. Whereas normal torches, you can get them early game. Number 299 is the Chorus Flower. These are blocks that can grow into really big alien looking trees and can be found in the end. You can find them specifically when you go through the portals after you've beaten the ender dragon. This is the only place they'll spawn. Chorus flowers are mainly used to grow chorus plants. They can be planted on any end stone in any dimension, which is pretty cool. This now means I can have a massive chorus plant farm in my back garden. When you break these down, you can actually get chorus fruit, which you can eat, they'll give you hunger, and you'll randomly teleport, which is very good to get out of traps. Number 298 is netherrack, a block that's easy to mine and easy to place. After exploring the nether, I always have stacks and stacks and stacks of these blocks since they're so easy to obtain. So whenever I need a quick block to use to do something like block water, netherrack always has my back. But not only that, if you smelt netherrack down, you'll get nether bricks, and that's how you actually obtain nether bricks. But not only that, that, you can actually use netherrack to craft the netherite upgrade smithing template, which is really useful, because that's how you get netherite armor, and you can also use it to get the rib armor trim. Number 279 is blackstone. Now, decoratively, this block may not look the best, but hold your horses for a second. This block can actually act as a cobblestone. It can craft a brewing stand, a furnace, all of the stone tools, like to craft the snout armor trim, even all of the blackstone variants like walls, stairs, and slabs. 206 is cobbled deep slit. Similar to cobblestone and blackstone, cobbled deep slit has all of the same craft, but this time it can actually craft the silence armor trim. It can craft all the same tools, the brewing stands, furnaces, but personally I prefer deep slit as a whole because I love all the deep slit bricks, the deep slit tiles, the polished deep slit, etc, etc. Number 295 is the crimson fungus. Technically, our first sapling on this list. Because if you use bone meal on this guy on Crimson Nylum, this thing will grow into a tree, where you can collect all of its useful wood. Now, even though this thing can produce trees, it's in the nether only, which is pretty much mid-game. And that's not going to help you out early game at all. So even though, yes, this block can be useful and does produce wood, it's definitely not the most productive way of getting wood in your Minecraft world. Although this does produce the crimson wood, so if you're a fan of the crimson wood, this is probably for you. Now, Number 294 is the Warped Fungus. Who would have guessed it? It does the exact same as the Crimson Fungus, but this time it produces all of the blue wood. And for me, I personally prefer the blue wood. Number 293 is the Crimson Nylium. Technically, this is the grass that you place the Crimson Fungus on. For example, Crimson Fungus is the sapling, and now this is the grass. Same as the grass, the Crimson Nylium can actually be bone mealed on and grow lots of different nether plants. Which is a very nice touch, considering this is still the block you have to place the Crimson Fungus on to create the tree. So yeah, this block kind of comes hand in hand with the crimson fungus. So I guess you'll never guess what's coming next, hmm? Number 292 is Warped Nylium. What? Literally the exact same thing, but this time this block is for the Warped Fungus. Number 201 is Powdered Snow. On the topic of the nether, the powdered snow is the quickest, most efficient way to get fire off you once you're on fire in the nether. And that is already a winning use since now I don't have to use the stinky cauldron. But also the block of powdered snow, this thing, you can actually fall through it and now freeze to death in Minecraft. Side note, I do love the heart icons when you're freezing to death. Even though I have to die to see them, they look pretty cool. And also if you're feeling sneaky, you can use these blocks as a trap to trap players and freeze them to death as well. 290 is the ladder. This block is old. Added all the way back in Java Edition InfDev, which is before the beta, the ladder was added just to simply be a block that you use on other blocks to climb up those blocks. And I gotta say that this block has aged like fine wine. In my newest world, I am still using ladders to get up and down my base. They're just so convenient to have, and I absolutely love them. Number 289 is the glass pane. 
The glass pane is a decorative transparent block that some would argue is more convenient to have over the normal glass. In my opinion though, even though it might be convenient, the glass pane for me doesn't fit into builds just as good as glass. Not to say that the glass pane is a bad block, I just do prefer the glass block. The glass pane is still a simple yet effective decorative block that can still be dyed into all of the colours. Number 287 is the Soul Campfire. Now the Soul Campfire is a blue variant to the normal campfire. The Soul Campfire is a really cool, unique decorative block that I'd argue is very spooky. It can also be used to cook four pieces of food, which is a nice touch. Again, the only problem with the Soul Campfire is that it requires Soul Sand to make, which is pretty mid-game. Therefore, even though decorative-wise it might look better, it's harder to obtain. Number 286 is the Normal Campfire. Decoratively, this block is amazing and just as good as the Soul Campfire, but this guy is a an early game champion. You only need sticks, wood, and coal to craft this. So I'd suggest using this guy in your starter base to add a nice, cozy atmosphere, and you can also cook your food on it. A cool secret use this block has is that if you put out the fire with water, you can now use this block to make makeshift bridges, which is pretty cool. Number 285 is the Soul Fire. Now this block is taking rain just simply because of how it looks. In my personal opinion, this block looks sick. When fire is lit on soul sand or soul soil, it turns blue. And this blue fire can be lit eternally, which means it could be used for super cool torches or super cool walkways. Number 284 is the Ominous Banner. I'm ranking this banner aside from the actual banner because you'll get this banner specifically from killing the raid captains. And then once you get the bad omen with this Ominous Banner, you can then start the village raid. And then once you finish the village raid, you can get all of the glorious loot and totems of undying. Number 283 is Sugarcane. Sugarcane can be used to craft paper and sugar. But my favorite part of sugarcane is that it can be automatically farmed so easy just with the use of some pistons and observers. With this, you'll get all the sugar you need in the world and all of the paper you need in the world to craft bookshelves. Number 282 is normal ice. Decoratively, the ice is a nice block to have because you can create things like frozen lakes or ice skating rinks. But the main reason why ice is pretty high is because you can use it to create those sweet nether highways. With ice and a boat, you can speed through the nether, which will send you thousands and thousands of blocks across the overworld. Number 281 is packed ice, the upgraded version of normal ice. Because up until this point, I haven't mentioned that ice actually comes in three variants. And the more far you go, the more slipperier the ice gets. So yeah. Yeah, when you fill a crafting table with nine ice, you're gonna get packed ice, the more effective slippery ice. But what happens if you fill a crafting table with nine packed ice, you might be asking? Well, that's why number 280 is blue ice. If you wanted even more slipperiness and even more effective working ice, well, this block is for you. Ahem. <clears throat> the slipperiest ice out of all of the ice variants. Although do be warned, it takes 81 regular ice just to craft one blue ice. So at that point, you may as well just use uh, normal ice or packed ice, but this it's more slippery, so hey. Number 279 is the Crimson Fence Gate and our first wooden fence gate. Now here we have the fence gate, and in many instances, the greater, more superior fence. And the main two points that make it more superior is that you can open and close this with your hand, and it can also be controlled by redstone. And unlike the fence, you can actually wear the fence gate on your face using commands as a mask. Yeah. Bet you couldn't do that with a fence. Yeah, look at me go. And by now, you guys probably know the wooden ranking, but we're gonna go over it anyway. First, we've got the mangrove fence gate, then the acacia gate. Then we've got the warped gate, and then the dark oak gate. Then the jungle, then the birch, spruce, bamboo, cherry. And to finish her off, we have the classic oak fence gate. If I've changed any of the rankings around there, we're actually gonna get to the planks further on, and I'll explain my reasons then. Number 268 is the crimson hanging sign. Added in 1.20, the hanging signs and the signs in general have so many cool features. Where with the main function is you can write messages on them and then you can color them with dyes and make them glow with glow ink sacks. Also, it's one of the best ways to in-game communicate with each other if you don't want to say anything in chat. And you can also have so much fun with them like making building signs or labeling chests. Although decoratively, the hanging signs might look cooler. It's just they're much more harder to craft as you need iron to make chains. And as you all know, the crimson wood isn't my favorite, so this is why the crimson hanging sign is at the bottom. Number 267 is the mangrove hanging sign. Number 266 is the acacia. Number 265 is the warped. Number 264 is the dark oak. Number 263 is the jungle. Number 262 is birch. 
Number 261 is Bamboo. Number 260 is Spruce. Number 259 is Cherry. And number 258 is the Oak Hanging Sign. Again, I am a little bit biased towards Oak, because not only is it one of the classic blocks of Minecraft, but it's also one of the easiest woods to obtain. Number 257 is the Crimson Pressure Plate. Although for now, we're going to touch on all of the wooden pressure plates. The wooden pressure plate is the more sensitive version of all the pressure plates that can detect all entities, producing the maximum signal strength of 15. Now, like I've said before, I love any block that brings any more value to redstone. Playing Minecraft, I used to have so much fun with this block because not only could you set up traps like TNT exploding or sand falling, but you could also use these things as like secret door entrances or just to simply automatically open your own door. These blocks are a fantastic way of just emitting redstone. The only thing that really limits you from this block is creativity. With a redstone component like this, you can go absolutely wild and you can use it for any contraption you can just dream up. But again, out of all the wooden variants, the crimson variant isn't my favorite. Although again, it does come down to preference. Right, we just did the woods, so let's quickly speed through these. Next, we have mangrove, then acacia, then warped, then dark oak, then jungle, then birch, then bamboo, then spruce, then cherry. Then we have the oak pressure plate, really for the same reasons as the oak hanging sign. Next, we have 246, the polished blackstone pressure plate, and 245, the stone pressure plate. Now, these stone pressure plates are a little bit different, and they can only detect players and mobs but producing the same redstone emit level of 15. Although it does come down to preference which one you use, I feel like the stone one is easier to obtain. Also, the stone pressure plate does have a craft where you can craft it into a detector rail. Number 244 to 234 are the wooden buttons. Now, since you know all of my wooden preferences, I just thought let's just make this easier other than going over every single wooden button individually. The wooden button is another amazing component to redstone. The wooden button specifically can be pushed by arrows and tridents. Unlike the pressure plate where something is on it, it still emits the redstone signal. When I activated, the wooden button emits redstone for 15 redstone ticks, which is 1.5 seconds. This makes it a monostable power source, which means it automatically deactivates shortly after being activated, which means it's perfect for secret doors where you push that button, get through the secret door, then the secret door will close behind you. And that is just one of its millions of different redstone uses that you can use this redstone component for. Number 233 is the polished blackstone button, and number 232 is the stone button. The crafts for these blocks is literally one of the respective block in a crafting table and you'll turn that block into a button. While the wooden button remains active for 15 redstone ticks, the stone button remains active for 10 redstone ticks, which means as soon as you push this, you better be quick. All of these buttons do come down to preference, so a lot of the time choosing between these buttons does come down to a creative decision. Now we're finally heading to the B tier blocks and getting closer to that top 100. Number 231 is simply fire. Now this block has many a purposes. Just like the soul fire, decorative the fire block looks amazing because again you can place it on netherrack make it last forever and then use this as cool walkways or giant flame torches but not only that, with a simple flint and steel, you can see your enemy bases fall and crumble to the ground. Or, you know, you run up to a village, right click on one of the houses with a flint and steel, and watch the entire thing burn. It was so satisfying back in the day just to find a village and start burning it down for no reason. It was just so satisfying. Why? I don't know. Maybe I'm a psychopath. Who knows? Number 230 is the Activator Rail. Our first rail on this list, and I'm quickly going to say that I love the rails because they can turn into roller coasters. Oh yeah, and automatic farms. But roller coasters, roller coasters are sick! Anyway, the Activator Rail is a type of powerable rail that can eject players and mobs huh? from regular minecarts, and it can also lock and unlock hopper minecarts and ignite TNT minecarts. It's a very unique rail for very specific uses, as you can tell by that description, but it can also use command blocks in minecarts if you're getting real fancy with it. So yeah, a lot of cool uses this block actually has, but still the worst rail in my opinion. Number 229 is the copper block. The copper block is a decorative block with so many variants, and the block can actually oxidize. Non-waxed copper blocks have four stages of oxidation. We got the normal oxidation, we got the exposed, we got the weathered, and we got the oxidized. All of these different block variations can also be turned into their respective slabs and stays. And if you put any of these four variations into a crafting table, you can get the cut version of that block. And an extra use this block brings if you want to use it is that you can compact all of your copper ingots in one 
block. Number 228 is the quartz bricks. A fantastic constructive and decorative block. I tend to mainly use this block when I'm going for a more modern kind of build. Or if I'm building a structure and I need something to look like marble, this block will come in very handy. For me, all of the quartz blocks is a bit of a fancy block you tend to use once you start to get towards the mid game. For the same reasons, number 227 is the quartz pillar. The exact same reasons, this is another fancy looking decorative block. But depending on which way you place this pillar, like a tree, it has a top, a bottom and the sides. Number 226 is the smooth quartz. Whilst building out of all of these quartz blocks, I'd say the smooth quartz blocks is probably one of the easiest to use since you know it's just smooth on all surfaces. Finally, we've arrived at number 225, and that's the quartz block. This guy's at the top of all of the quartz blocks simply because you use the block of quartz to obtain all the other quartz block variants. And you can also use this to get the quartz slabs or the quartz stays, which is pretty nice. Now, the reason why chiseled quartz isn't up here with the rest is because I don't actually tend to use chiseled quartz at all. I know. Number 224 is pointed dripstone. This pointy block can be found in the caves of Minecraft and has many uses. For example, you can drop these giant spikes on players from above to completely kill them. Whereas the damage from these spikes can go all the way up to 20 full hearts. But if the player is wearing a helmet, it reduces this by a quarter. But not only that, these are technically Minecraft's version of spikes because if anyone walks on top of these or jumps on them, they take damage. Now the best usage of these blocks is to either farm lava or water. All you gotta do is place your lava or water, then a dripstone block, then dripstone below that, and it'll start drip dripping away into the cauldron. This is awesome because this now provides an infinite lava source. Number 223 is glowstone. Glowstone is a decorative light emitting block that spawns and overhangs in the nether. Glowstone can be crafted into redstone lamps and also respawn anchors. If you mine glowstone, you can actually get yourself glowstone dust, which you can use then to create spectral arrows or firework stars. But the main reason why glowstone is so high up on this list is because glowstone is used in potions to make the potion more potent, which then leads to you becoming stronger with stronger potions. Number 223 22 is nether warts. The nether warts are funguses found in nether fortresses and bastions and is used to grow in soul sand. The nether warts actually come hand in hand with glowstone because you need the nether wart to actually create the awkward portions, which is how you make portions. But not only that, nether warts are used in the recipe to create red nether bricks. Number 221 is the nether quartz ore. This ore is found frequently in the nether and when mined can give you a lot of XP and that's really good. If you keep mining for quartz, you'll build up a lot of XP. But not only that, since this is quartz ore, this is obviously how you obtain quartz and how you can create all of the quartz blocks. Number 220 is skulk. Just like the nether quartz or skulk is an amazing efficient way to build up XP. All you gotta do is find skulk in a deep slate cave, grab a hoe and start farming. Number 219 is the decorated pot. This decorated pot is a new block added in 1.20. It can be crafted with four individual pottery sheds and you can actually mix and match all of these sheds to make your own unique decorated pot, which is a very nice creative touch. And also if you place a smaller pot on top of this decorative pot, you now have one giant pot for your flowers. A cool build feature is if you place these pots on top of each other, you can actually create a totem pole. Number 218 is the magma block. Not only is this animated block one of the coolest looking blocks in the game, but it has so much more features that might actually end up saving your life. I love the feature where if you're underwater and you're starting to drown, you can actually stand on a magma block and you won't drown. But not only that, you can use the magma block in a water elevator to pull you or items downwards. Number 217 is kelp. Talking about water elevators, kelp is the best way to create these water elevators. Once placing all of these kelps in a column, you turn all of the water into source blocks, which now allows you to be pushed up or pulled down. They can also be smelted into dried kelp if you want to make dried kelp blocks, but that's entirely up to you. Number 216 is the turtle egg. This is up here entirely for decorative purposes because look how cute they look and they also hatch into baby turtles. Ah, You have to be careful though because zombies or mobs can actually trample on top of these eggs. But not only that, when these baby turtles grow up, they actually drop scoot, which can be used to make into a turtle shell that you can wear on your head. This gives you the power to be able to breathe underwater for 10 seconds. Number 250 is the grindstone. The grindstone is a very handy block to have because it can repair items and tools as well as removing enchantings from them to get you some XP. The grindstone can also be used to create weaponsmith villagers, which actually have some nice trades like coal for emeralds, iron for emeralds, flint for emeralds, or even diamonds for emeralds. Number 214 is the wither rose. The most deadly flower in Minecraft, this flower can actually damage you and give you the wither effect. You can also use wither roses to farm mob loots as they actually do kill mobs. 
And if you want, you can farm skeletons with wither roses in the nether. If you mix the wither rose into a suspicious stew, guess what? It'll give you the wither effect. What? Decoratively, a really interesting block as it gives off these unique cool particles. Number 213 are candles. On the spookier side of things, the candles are a decorative block that emit a light source added in version 1.17. They're a small, subtle block that can be aesthetically pleasing, and they can also be stacked up to four times, and then finally lit with a flint and steel. The cool, unique thing about candles is they can be dyed into every single colour and crafted with honeycomb and string. And if anyone's celebrating their birthday, you can put candles on cakes. How awesome is that? Number 212 is Suspicious Sand, and number 211 is Suspicious Gravel. Added in the brand new Tales and Trails update, Suspicious Sand and Suspicious Gravel are fragile, gravity-affected blocks found in various various overworld structures. You can use a brush on these blocks to reveal a cool hidden item. You can find really cool things in these, like TNT, diamonds, emeralds, and even those pottery shirts. Overall, a really cool and unique take on a block that adds a little bit more to the discovery side of Minecraft. Number 210 is Soul Sand, and number 209 is Soul Soil. Both of these blocks are frequently found across the nether, but the reason why Soul Sand is behind Soul Soil is because Soul Sand slows the players down really annoyingly. Both of these blocks can be used to spawn the wither, which inevitably leads, after defeating it, to a nether star. Both of these blocks can also be used to create the Soul Torch, and the Soul Soil can be used to create the Soul Campfire. Also, you can use Soul Soil in a lava generator to create infinite percent salt, which is pretty cool. Block number 208 is the Daylight Detector. The Daylight Detector is a really, really unique redstone component that gives off a redstone signal if it's day or if it's night, depending if you use the Daylight or the Inverted Daylight Detector. So this means you could use it for builds, for example, if it's daytime, you could have your street lights off, but when it turns night, all of your street lights turn on. Number 207, and our second rail is the detector rail. This railway acts similar to a pressure plate, whereas if a player goes over this, it will send off a redstone signal. You can get very creative and funky with this block. If you combine this block with a comparator and a chest in a minecart went over this, the redstone signal will change depending on how full that chest is. This works with every single container like hoppers, and furnaces. These could be used in very unique ways to build automatic farms and storaging systems. Number 206 is simply the melon. Let's dial it all the way back down to a simple melon. This melon is a great food resource that once you break it, drops a bunch of melons. The one thing I do love about melons is if you grow loads of them in a straight line and have a really OP, high efficient axe, you can mine all of these melons in seconds. Number 205 is the chain. The chain is a great addition to the decorative and building side of Minecraft. There's so many cool and dumb things you can do with it. For example, look at this villager hanging upside down. What, what's he doing? The one thing I do love doing with chains is hanging lanterns on them because these two blocks together look amazing. Not only can you place them vertically, but you can also place them horizontally as well, which gives you a lot of creative flexibility with this block. Number 204 is stone. Stone is a block found absolutely everywhere, but it's actually a little bit more tricky to obtain because you either have to smelt cobblestone or you can grab yourself some silk touch. Although when you actually finally obtain the stone, you can use it in really useful things like to craft the redstone comparator, the redstone repeater, buttons, pressure plates, and even my favorite stone bricks. Also, if you smelt this guy down, you can get smooth stone, which is a nice decorative block. Number 203 is the colored stained glass pane. This is the exact same block as the glass pane, but this time in various different unique colors. So if you have a color themed house, like a pink house, you could use pink stained glass. Like the pink stained glass could go very well with a cherry blossom house. Very cool. Number 202 is colored stained glass. The exact same thing as the stained glass pane, but this time it's a full block. And in my opinion, it fits better with most builds. But I mean, again, it does just come down to preference. You're either a pane guy or a full block guy. Number 201 is glass. Now this is a clean, full block of glass that works well with pretty much every single build or house slash base for that matter. The glass blocks are just so aesthetically pleasing because they link together and you can actually see into the outside world, which is nice. Glass isn't just limited to decoration purposes though. It can actually be used to craft the beacon, the daylight detector, end crystals for PvP, and tinted glass. So basically, to make every single variant of glass, you're gonna have to start off with a full block of normal glass. Number 200 is the redstone lamp. 
So this is a decorative redstone component that lights up when it gets a redstone signal. A crazy thing about this block is redstone engineers have found a way for the redstone lamp to be a screen of a working calculator in Minecraft. That is just bonkers. And that's why I think so highly of redstone. The possibilities are literally endless. 199 is the smooth stone. Not only is this a decorative block I use a lot of the time for my floors, but you can actually use this block to turn a furnace into a blast furnace, which is pretty much a super furnace for smelting ores and is really useful. 198 is the iron door. Like normal wooden doors, the iron door actually can't be opened by your bare hand and needs a redstone signal to be opened. The iron door does add a little bit more security, but also it gives some value to redstone. One thing I do love about the iron door is the iron door trap where you simply walk into it and now you can't get out because you're trapped, you dummy. 197 is the normal piston. The pistons can be used in really OP farms like the bamboo farm or the sugarcane farm. Now, mainly the piston is used to push blocks away from itself and not to retract them. So mainly this block is used to push out lots of blocks if you're farming them, for example, like wood, but can't be used for some secret doors as blocks need to be retracted. Number 196 is the lever. Another redstone component that can be used in so many different ways. Unlike the button, the lever will actually stay on and carry on emitting a redstone signal until turned off. A cool thing about the lever is that it can be placed on any side of the block in any direction. The lever gives off the highest redstone signal of 15, leaving the lever to be a simple yet effective redstone component. 195 is the redstone block. The redstone block is a block that gives off a redstone signal constantly. Since this redstone output is actually a block, it can be pushed around by pistons, leading to even more cool, creative, and unique redstone contraptions. 194 is red sand. Red sand is is the harder to obtain variant of normal sand that can be used to smelt down into glass, which then leads to all of the glass uses. Number 193 is sand. Sand is an early game block, easy to obtain, and like red sand, it can be used to smelt all the way down to glass, which gives you all of the glass uses, but also, sand's a good decorative block. You can use it to build things like sand castles and even beaches. Number 192 is the composter. There's been a lot of talk of the composter through this video, and that's a good thing, because the amount of blocks and items you can actually compost is great. Because once you fill up the composter, it'll actually give you bone meal and you can use that bone meal then to grow saplings into trees and crops into food. But not only that, a composter being near a villager can actually turn the villager into a farmer, which then gives you lots of great trades. You can trade all of your food like wheat, potatoes, carrots, beetroots into emeralds. You can also trade your pumpkins and melons into emeralds, which is literally some of the best trades if you have a farming empire because then you're going to be rich on emeralds. But not only that, these farmer villagers can actually farm for you. But the composter can't actually collect these items for you. You're gonna need chests and hoppers, which does bring the composter down. Number 191 are the potatoes. These potatoes can be planted in farmlands, and once they're fully grown, you break them to get even more potatoes. Not only that, you can smelt them down into baked potatoes, which give you a nice bit of hunger. And also, like we previously mentioned, they can be traded in for emeralds. So the potatoes and the composter kind of go hand in hand, as the potatoes can go into the composter. Number 190 are the carrots. Just like the potatoes, these carrots can be planted in farmlands to fully grow than to be broken into even more carrots. They can also be traded into emeralds, but these carrots can be crafted into golden carrots, which give you really, really good saturation. They can also be composted as well, which kind of goes hand in hand with the potatoes and the compost. Number 189 and the best food block is the cake. You can't go wrong with the cake in Minecraft. You can literally celebrate anyone's birthday with it and you can eat this cake up to seven different times. The fact that you can put candles on this as well is just so cute and such a nice decorative block. I tend to leave cakes around if I'm feeling peckish so I can snack on them now and again. And to craft them, you need sugar, eggs, wheat, and milk buckets. Also, if you're feeling very funky, you can make a cake staircase, which will shoot you up really quickly. Number 188, and our first wooden door is the warped door. Hey, it's not the crimson wood this time. Who would have thought? Even though the wood is blue, the warped door doesn't do it for me because it has these weird looking veins over the front of it. But let's quickly talk about doors for a second. Doors are at the heart of every Minecraft base or home. If you want to get in somewhere, you're going to have a door. The fact that you can have two doors together to create one double door is really cool and puts the cherry on top of the icing. Number 187 is the crimson door. Yeah, the crimson's not that good either. It just looks like such a strange door. It looks like the door to your uncle's basement or something. I don't know, there's, there's something off about that door. Number 186 is the mangrove door. The mangrove door looks like they took the crimson door, refurbished the crimson door to look a little bit nicer. Personally, I still don't like the color, but at least there's like 
diamond shapes on the front. That's pretty cool. Number 185 is the jungle door. Nothing really special about this door. The door kind of looks old and like it's starting to rot away a little bit, but I do like the color. If I was building out a jungle wood, I'd obviously use this door. 184 is the birch door. Now we're getting a little bit better with these doors. I do like the birch door to say the least. The color's nice, but I'm not a fan of this white panel at the front of it. 183 is the brand new bamboo door. I like the little handle on this guy, and I do like the threaded bamboo at the front of it. Although for me personally, there are better looking doors on this list. 182 is the acacia door. On one hand, you can have a door that has no holes and you can't see through. And then on the complete opposite side of that hand, you have the acacia door where you can almost see straight through. With this door, you're either going to like it or hate it. It depends how much privacy you want. Number 181 is the dark oak door. Now this is a clean, stern, solid door. If I were to picture a door in my head, I kind of picture the dark oak door. I like the golden handle on it too. It's very nice and snazzy. Number 180 is the spruce door. I love the vibe and look of this door. It's a nice, solid, clean door, just like the dark oak door. You could also use this door for builds, not just as a door, like for bunk beds. It's, it's a pretty useful door. I'm a big fan of the spruce door, I gotta say. Number 179 is the brand new cherry door. I really do love the cross pattern at the front of this door and the fact that you can actually see through the gaps. The color's nice, it's a nice shade of pink, and also the white handle at the front is a nice touch. But for me, my favorite door is number 178, the oak door. Again, I'm a little bit biased, but it's an absolute classic. I always use this door because I don't want to leave my roots. Maybe I am a little bit boring for this choice, but hey, I'm a simple guy. Number 177 to number 166 are the wooden signs. A more simple version of the Minecraft hanging sign. Because you don't actually need iron to craft these and you only need wood, it is such an early game block. And you can grab these bad boys straight away and start writing whatever you want. Number 166. 65 is the item frame. I had to sit here and choose between the signs and the item frames, but I think the item frames comes out on top. You can place any item you want into these frames to frame the items. It's pretty self-explanatory. But these blocks become a lifesaver when trying to figure out what chest has what item in it. You can simply put an item frame on the chest to show what block is in this chest. It's such a game changer for item frames, but also you can get creative. Using commands, you can actually get invisible item frames, which looks so cool because you can just put items anywhere. Coming in at number 100. 63 is the bookshelf. This block debuted all the way back in 2009 in version 0.26 survival test in Java Edition Classic. The bookshelf has aged really well since everyone still uses it in their Minecraft worlds to this day. Now, the reason that being, of course, is because you need to use bookshelves to upgrade your enchantments with the enchanting table. But not only that, this is a great decoration block as well. You can have these on your walls to show that you have bookshelves and, and you look smart. You look book smart. Look, you go. Yeah, I read books. <laughs> Number 162 is Lapis Lazuli O. On the same talk of enchantments, Lapis is used in the enchanting table to enchant any of your tools and armor. To be honest, the Lapis Lapis ore is good value because once you mine it, it can drop from four to nine pieces of lapis. Well, that's pretty good. With all the new deep slit caves in Minecraft, I tend to not find this block as much as I do find deep slit lapis ore. But if you do find this block, you are going to get some nice XP and some nice lapis. Number 161 is deep slit lapis ore. This block is higher up than normal lapis as I find it easier to find and it's just more accessible in the new caves. So that means when I go mining, I get even more lapis for my enchantments. Let's go, baby. Woo! Number 159 is is the cactus. One of, if not the most iconic block of the Minecraft desert. This prickly block can kill you, your enemies, and even mobs. But probably the best part about this block is that you can harvest it easily and it can be smelted down into green dye, which then will give you XP for smelting, which means you can create OP massive XP farms with the cactus. And over time, they'll give you hundreds and hundreds of XP levels, which is insane. Number 158 is Deep Slate Coal. Although mid game when you're down in the deep dark caves deep slate coal might be easier to find the normal coal is just a lot more accessible early game now obviously these blocks drop coal which can lead to so many things like torches lanterns campfires and much much more and not to mention the best part of coal is that it's such a good item to smelt anything in the game. It's quick, easy to obtain, and pretty much all of my furnaces are filled with coal. Number 157 is normal coal ore. Now it does the exact same thing as deep slit coal ore, but normal coal ore can be found on the surface, which is so much more accessible early game, and you can use it then to smelt anything you need early game. And also not to mention, torches are really useful early game because you need to be able to see in the mines. Number 156 is the coal block. 
Now, if you're sitting around mid game to late game with loads and loads of coal, and you're gonna use these coal to smelt, always craft blocks of coal to smelt, because they'll give you 11% extra smelt than just using 9 coal. This block is a little bit of a bonus when it comes to coal. Number 155 is the conduit. Once activated, the conduit actually holds quite a lot of power. Once you activate and build the conduit structure, it can actually kill drowns that come near it. But not only that, it can actually allow you to breathe underwater, which is quite nice. The conduit can be built in multiple different levels. If it's built correctly at its maximum state, it can have the radius of 96 blocks. It also gives you underwater night vision, increasing your mining speed by 16%, which is insane. Anything like Browns, Guardians, Elder Guardians within 8 blocks of this conduit will start to take damage. So if you have a base near water, or if you like going underwater a lot of the time in a certain place, try building the conduit. It will help you out loads. Number 154 is the Nether Gold Orb. This block is absolutely perfect for speedruns as it allows you to barter with piglins extremely easy. These naturally generate everywhere across the Nether. They drop gold nuggets which allows you to craft these into gold ingots. And then once you have these gold ingots, you can start trading as long as you find piglins. You can get pearls, you can even get enchanted books, enchanted armor, the list goes on. Number 153 is the Dragon Head. Unlike other mob heads, this head is not obtained by simply killing a mob by a charged creeper's explosion. Added as part of 1.9, this head is obtainable by reaching the end ship high above the end city. Be careful, this head is at the end of the ship and you could fall off really easily and die. The main use of this block is decoration and you can use redstone on it to make it open its mouth, which is very cool. But mainly, this block is a trophy and shows that you've beaten the ender dragon, gone to the end city and found a dragon head. Number 152 is the carpet. Simply crafted with two wool, the carpet has many variations. They come in every single color. You could spice up the look of any room by using these carpets without actually having to mine up the floor. Just simply place these over any blocks. But not only that, carpets are really useful for hopping in and out of farm pens, as mobs can't actually jump over the fences with carpets. Llamas can also be equipped with carpets in their carpet slot, and each carpet color shows as a different patterned rug on the llama's back, which is so cute! Look how many different patterns there are! They're all so awesome! They're so cute! If you have a llama, you should be using a carpet. Number 151 is the Minecraft Loom. This block is a fantastic creative block and I absolutely love it. Used to create any banner pattern and honestly the possibilities are absolutely endless. Like, look at all these cool banners. What, they were all made by the loom. Whoa. But not just that, the loom is actually a villager worksite and can create the shepherd. Now the shepherd will actually trade you wool for emeralds and things like dye for emeralds, which is pretty nice. Number 150 is finally concrete. This block is amazing for any colorful, vibrant builds. Since these blocks are almost full solid colors, you can use them to make giant Minecraft statues or even really cool pixel art. Definitely one of, if not my favorite creative block. You can use it to color or to spice up any Minecraft build, and that's what I absolutely love about it. It brings more vibrant colors to the game. Number 149 is the respawn anchor. Since when you try to set your spawn point in the nether, you know, you literally explode and die, the respawn anchor comes in really handy if you know you're gonna get into a mess in the nether. Since now, with a little bit of crying obsidian and glowstone, you can actually set your spawn point in the nether, which is actually really useful in some situations. It completely gets rid of that moment when you die and you realize you have to run all the way back through the portal and find your items as quickly as possible before they despawn. Now you can respawn in the nether pretty close to your items. Number 148 is the target block. Now this block has a lot of fun properties to it. When most projectiles hit this block, it will emit redstone, which is good fun. Fun to create things like mini games where you have to shoot the target to win. And this block actually has some unique redstone properties. Like you can use this block for simpler redstone designs. Like sometimes you don't even need repeaters. You could just use the target block, which is kind of weird, but nonetheless, very cool. Number 147 is lava. Now this might be a little controversial because lava is a pretty big reason and why people quit <laughs> Minecraft in general. Like if you're mining and you mine over lava and you fall into a lava pit and you die, that is all of your progress, all of your inventory vaporized in seconds. You had diamonds, not anymore. But not only do lava pits spawn in the overworld, but lava is everywhere in the nether. Like your items are gone if you die in the nether. Now then, I'm not making a very good case for this block and some of you might already be wondering, then why is lava so high? Even though lava is so dangerous, it still has so many useful and unique uses. First off, lava pools can be used to create obsidian portals easily and quick in speedruns. Lava can be used to create infinite cobblestone, which is really useful on a sky block, and infinite basalt as well. 
Lava can be picked up in a bucket and used in a furnace to smelt items for so long. You can use lava in automatic farms to get automatic things like cooked chicken for days, and lava even leads to infinite iron in automatic farms, since you need lava to kill all the iron golems. And with all of this itself, lava can actually be infinitely created with pointed dripstone and cauldrons. So, to those of you out there who keep dying and quitting Minecraft to lava, just try to be a little bit more careful in Minecraft. Because lava could be your worst enemy, but also sometimes in some certain situations, it can be your best friend giving you all of that infinite iron. Number 146 is the Jigsaw Block. A block only available in creative mode that is used to spawn in structures. Now I do like to mess around with this block a little bit to see what random things I could spawn in, but this also really does help with creative builds. Now we're finally heading into all of the blocks that I personally think are all A tier. Number 145 is the player head. In my opinion, the player head is a really underrated creative block. Even though this is literally the head of some player skins, people have weird skin. I mean, you could use the player head to create a full cheeseburger just sitting there, or a full mug of beer. Whatever your favorite fictional character is, or literally whatever you can think of, you could probably get that in a Minecraft skin, and it can go on your wall using commands. Number 144 is the barrier. Only obtainable in creative mode, the barrier is an invisible block that no one can break or get through. So this block is Ow, perfect what? for survival maps, PvP maps, to keep players in an arena. The only people who can see the barrier blocks are the people who have the barrier blocks, since they only appear when a barrier block is in your hand. Number 143 is Bedrock, the iconic unbreakable block of Minecraft that spawns at the very bottom of the Minecraft world. Using this block in creative mode for prisons back in the day was so much from. Anyone who was in survival at the time who did to enter would be stuck there forever. Also, we can't forget that the entire ceiling of the nether is all bedrock, and once you get above that bedrock, you have a lot of space to build with. Number 142 is the smoker, a block that once crafted can smelt food way quicker. In fact, it actually smelts your food twice as quick. It can be crafted with one furnace in the middle and four logs around it. Having this smoker at your furnace station is perfect because now you'll never use furnaces to cook your food again. Number 141 is the Jack-O-Lantern. Again, one of, if not the best light source in Minecraft. Just look at this guy. It is so sick for Halloween or spooky builds. But let's not forget, with the Jack-O-Lantern, you can actually build a snow golem to throw snowballs at enemies. Number 140 is the Carved Pumpkin. This block can spawn the snow golem and the iron golem. Although this block doesn't light up, it can be crafted into the Jack-O-Lantern if you really want it. Where the Carved Pumpkin really shines is that you can wear it on your head so endermen don't see you. But not only that, if you put Curse of Binding on a pumpkin and then set up a trap so the player is forced to wear the Cursed Pumpkin, they now have a pumpkin stuck on their head until they die. That is so unlucky. I would hate to be that guy. And number 139 is the pumpkin itself. The pumpkin is the main reason how you can actually get your hands on the carved pumpkin and hands on the jack-o'-lantern. The pumpkins are planted in farmlands with pumpkin seeds and grow adjacent to that block. They can also be crafted into pumpkin pie or more pumpkin seeds to grow even more pumpkins. Number 138 is wheat crops. Wheat is such a great source of food since wheat seeds are so easy to obtain. All you gotta do is break some grass. But not only that, wheat can actually be used to create bread, cake, cookies, hay bales, and even packed mud. Overall, wheat is one of my favorite crops to grow because it has so many uses and it's a great food source. Number 140 is the trapped chest. This block is great fun and it's a great way to punish people who keep walking into your house and checking your items without your permission. As soon as this chest is opened, it emits a redstone signal, which means as soon as someone opens this chest, you could have TNT blow up, you could have the floor be removed below them and they fall into lava, you could have anything happen to the people who are trying to steal your goods. Just a great block overall and great fun when you actually trap someone. Number 139 is the brand new Calibrated Skulk Sensor. The Calibrated Skulk Sensor is a craftable variant of the Skulk Sensor, similar to its counterparts, it detects vibrations, but with twice the range. And it can detect multiple vibrations in quicker succession. This block is such a unique redstone component, because depending on the sound you make, it will emit a different redstone signal. Which means you could open a secret door just by simply eating next to stone. So now you can emit redstone signals just by making specific noises, like if I used my fishing rod, I could have 
TNT blow up. Very random. But what this block now gives is endless possibilities for random redstone contraptions. Number 138 is the chain command block. Command blocks are a massive part of Minecraft, and especially in the map making side of things, because command blocks can do really cool things. Personally, I'm someone who doesn't use command blocks that often, but I do know the impact they actually have on a lot of players who like to do a lot of cool things. Now, the chain command block specifically connects commands together to set off a chain reaction, which, which is quite fitting for the name. So it's a block that helps out the command block itself, but not as important as the command block. In case you didn't know what these guys do is that they set off a command using redstone. Number 137 is the repeating command block. Added in the 1.9 pack from Minecraft, the repeating command block is also a redstone powered block that will perform server commands over and over and over again when attached to a redstone circuit. And there is a lot of things you can do because there's a lot of commands in Minecraft. So again, the possibilities are endless and this time they'll be activated over and over and over again. Number 136 is gold ore. Found in the caves of Minecraft, the normal variant of gold ore drops raw gold when mined. Now this is extremely useful because when smelted down, the gold ingot can craft items such as golden apples, golden carrots, clocks, and glistening melons. Not to mention it can craft other things like block of gold and powered rails. It can craft the golden armor set and tools, but I personally wouldn't use these as they're actually kind of very weak. But nonetheless, golden apples and golden carrots are amazing foods. Number 135 is the deep slit gold ore. Now this drops the exact same thing as the normal gold ore, but the deep slit gold ore is so much easier to find in the brand new 1.19 caves. Number 134 is the good old stone cutter. Now every slab, stairs, wall, chiseled block variant we've spoken about in this video today can all be created by the stone cutter. If you're playing Minecraft in survival and you want to build some cool things, the stone cutter is going to be your best friend. This is the block I use to stone cut all of my cobble deep slate into deep slate bricks. And my goodness, is it a game changer because I have these blocks for days. Number 133 is the redstone torch. A really, really important redstone component used in so many of the most important redstone contraptions. It can be used to craft the redstone repeater. It can be used to craft the redstone comparator. It can be used to craft the activator rail. It powers adjacent redstone dust to power level 15, including beneath the redstone torch if it's attached to the side of the block. It also activates adjacent mechanism components, including above or below pistons, redstone lamps, etc, etc. Number 132 is the normal rail. This is the normal average rail you can use to push minecarts around the place. These rails are really useful going downhill as you need nothing else to power them or to push you and also for going round corners as unlike the powered rail the normal rail can actually bend round corners but roller coasters rails can be used in roller coasters to make the coolest best roller coasters ever and i and i love a good roller coaster can't go wrong with a good roller coaster Whee! number 131 is the scaffolding block crafted with bamboo and string the scaffolding block is a block that's going to help you build massive structures as you can climb up and down through scaffolding, and also you can build towers from the bottom block. All you gotta do is keep placing blocks at the bottom, and the scaffolding will rise and rise and rise, which is perfect if you're building massive, really tall structures in survival mode. Number 130 is the mob spawner. The mob spawner is a great block once you find it in survival mode, as you can dig around the area of a mob spawner and use this mob spawner to farm XP from mobs spawning. All you gotta do is have a little bit of water, push them to the front, and just keep killing mobs until your chest are full of mob loot and your XP bar is full of XP. The downside of mob spawners is that you can't actually obtain them with silk touch in survival, unfortunately. But in version 1.16, the mob spawner had the title for the rarest block in Minecraft. It, it still might be this to date. Whereas in one seed, the buried treasure chest spawned on the same block as a mob spawner, forcing the game to output five pig spawners in the same spot. The odds of this happening was one in 36 quadrillion which is absolutely insane. Number 129 is the honey block. You can use this block to wall ride in Minecraft, which is pretty cool. But not only that, this block has loads of redstone use. Ahem, let the Minecraft wiki do the talking. When the honey block is moved by a piston, it attempts to move all adjacent blocks in the same direction. A honey block can move any block a sticky piston can pull, except for glazed terracotta and slime blocks. The blocks that are moved may in turn push other blocks, as if they were being pushed by a piston. This makes for some insane builds like flying aeroplanes and flying cars. Like, when did Minecraft get to this level of insane? Also, a cool feature 
as with hay bales, falling onto a honey block reduces the damage by 80%. Number 128 is the slime block. This block goes hand in hand with the honey block as they can do similar things. Ahem, <clears throat> let more of the Minecraft wiki do some more talking. When a slime block is pushed or pulled by a piston, it attempts to move all adjacent blocks in the same direction. Hmm, that sounds very familiar. It has the same properties as a honey block, but it's just a separate different block that can work together to create Minecraft contraptions. Which is awesome because as you know, this leads to flying aeroplanes and flying cars. And with these two blocks, honestly, the possibilities are endless. You can get really fancy and build things like mega doors. You gotta love a good redstone door. And another cool thing about slime is when you fall onto it from all the way up in the sky, you don't actually take any fall damage at all and you bounce back up, which is really good fun for some parkour. Number 127 is the chiseled bookshelf. A really new fancy decorative block that actually has more uses than just being decorative. This is a bookshelf that actually stores your books in real time. You can place enchanting books in here or readable books. All you gotta do is just right click to pop them back out and there you go. But not only that, they also gave off a redstone comparative signal, which means secret library door entrances. Heck yes. Again, I am yet but a simple man. I have a feeling some redstone engineers are gonna be annoyed at me because of the way I ranked redstone in this video, but I don't really use redstone guys, I'm sorry. If I'm wrong, I've tried my best. Number 126 is the redstone comparator. Now the redstone comparator is a very technical Minecraft redstone component. And to be honest, I don't fully understand the ins and outs of this block, whereas redstone engineers would. So from what I understand, looking at this image, if B is stronger than A, the output of C is completely cut off. And if A is stronger than B, the output of C is on, which directs redstone depending on the strength of other redstone signals. So there we go, we're learning as we're going along. This is awesome. Anyway, the thing I do know about redstone comparators is that it can connect to various blocks and depending on how full that block is, like chests for example, or the level of compost in a composter, or the amount of items in a hopper, it will give off different redstone signals using the comparator, which is the use I know the redstone comparator for. This block definitely has its uses and its very, very specific technical uses as well. I mean, the amount of things you can connect the comparator to. I don't even know you could connect it to a jukebox, an item frame, an end portal frame, a respawn anchor. There are so many things a comparator can get a redstone signal from, which is really cool. Number 125 is the redstone repeater. Now for a bit of simpler redstone that I do actually understand, once you're redstone signal starts to run out, you use the repeater to relight that redstone. And you can also use these repeaters to delay signals, which comes in really, really handy when trying to make music in Minecraft with the note blocks. It's an extremely useful redstone component that cannot be underlooked. Number 124 is the dispenser. This block can fire projectiles, use certain items or tools, and place certain blocks, fluids, or entities when given a redstone signal. You can get really creative with these blocks and use them as like defense mechanisms to shoot fireballs out of your castle, or you could run into dispensers to equip you of all of your armor. Dispensers can use bone meal on things, shoot eggs, use water, even shoot fireworks, flint and steel, minecarts. It can place and ignite TNT, shoot mobs out of, and you can even trap people huh? with the curse of binding pumpkin trap. In my opinion, there are so many fun, great uses with the Minecraft dispenser. Number 123 is the hay bale. I cannot stress enough how much I love finding these blocks in Minecraft Villagers early game because I instantly know that I now have so much food for so much time. You find stacks of these hay bales in villages and once collected, these hay bales give you stacks and stacks stacks of wheat, which you can turn into stacks and stacks of bread. And I, for one, absolutely love it. Oh, sorry villagers, gotta take your hay. But not only that, hay block can actually be used with redstone to create the target block, which is pretty cool. And also, if you land on a hay bale from falling from a height, it reduces the fall damage by 80%. Number 122 is cobblestone. Found on the side of mountains and underground, this early game block will help you progress so much. After you're done with your wooden tools, you can go straight into mining cobblestone to upgrade to your stone tools. But not only that, cobblestone can help you craft so many things. For example, you can craft a brewing stand, a dispenser, a dropper, a furnace, a lever, mossy cobblestone, an observer, pistons, and much, much more. Not only that though, but you can use the cobblestone to craft the brand new coast armor trim, the sentry armor trim, and the vex armor trim. Also, when you mine cobblestone, you can smelt it back into stone, which allows you to stone cut into so many different blocks. And decoratively too, the cobblestone is a simple yet effective block. Number 121 is the barrel. 
The barrel is a game that you obtain early game because it's so easy to make. With the chest, you can't have most blocks above it because it won't open. This isn't the case for barrel. The barrel will slide right into anywhere you place it and all you gotta do is right click to open and store your items. A great, fantastic way to store all of your items throughout Minecraft. Also, the barrel can be a villager workstation which creates the fishermen. They will give you string for emeralds, coal for emeralds, fish for emeralds, and even boats for emeralds. Overall, a fantastic block and I absolutely love the barrel. Number 120 is the jukebox. Costing 8 wood and 1 diamond, the jukebox is a great way to chill out after a long, hard adventure. The really cool thing about jukeboxes is that there are 16 different music discs to collect. So not only do you get an awesome jam when you play a song, but it also feels like a reward and a trophy for obtaining that music disc. How can you go wrong with having an in-game dance party with all your friends to the song chip? It just doesn't get better than this. Although technically it does with 119, the blast furnace. The blast furnace is a block that smelts ores, raw metals, and metal armor and tools twice as quickly as the normal furnace. This saves so much time when you've just come back from a giant mining trip with stacks and stacks of raw iron and gold. But not only that, the blast furnace is the armorer's job site block. And the armorer, well the armorer, if you have enough emeralds, will give you enchanted diamond gear, which is sick. Coming in at number 118 is the smithing table. The smithing table has been given so much more value with the brand new armor trims. You can now give cool unique patterns to your armor using the smithing table. But let's not forget that the smithing table is also used to upgrade your diamond armor into stronger netherite armor. Also, the smithing table creates the toolsmith and you can trade with these guys to get emeralds for coal, emeralds for iron, and if you have loads of diamonds, you can give diamonds for emeralds. Number 117 is iron ore. You cannot go wrong with this block. First off, it drops off raw iron, which you'll need to smelt into iron ingots. But once you've done that, boy, do you have a useful resource in your hands. Iron is such a staple of progression in Minecraft because you can craft so many new things like rails, anvils, blast furnaces, iron blocks, cauldrons, chains, compasses, crossbows, flint and steel, hop, iron tools, iron armor, minecarts, pistons, shears, the list goes on. You can actually use it as a way to color your armor trims as well, which is pretty cool. You literally can't go wrong with iron in Minecraft. Such a top tier block, love it. Number 116 is deep slate iron ore. The exact same thing as iron ore. It does drop raw iron, but this time it's so much easier to find, simply because of the generation in the new bigger caves. All you gotta do is some cave hopping and look around and you'll see stacks and stacks of deep slate iron ore. Now guys, I have a little bit of a confession to me. I've kind of messed up the numbers with the order of the blocks and this isn't actually 116. We've actually just reached the 100th block. So, my bad. But anyway, let's get into our top 100 blocks of Minecraft. Number 100 is the Emerald Block. So, this is a decorative block that technically doesn't do much other than makes you look rich. But the one thing it can do and does do is activate beacons. Also, if you've set up an entire villaging trading empire, you can actually compact all of your emeralds into to emerald blocks and make a rich room because now you're rich. Also, it's vibrantly green. I'm not biased this way. For our first double digits, we have the block of netherite. This block is really here to show your dedication for the grind that you married. Just like the block of emeralds, the compressed netherite can set off the beacon. And now you might be thinking, but hey, Rennie, a block of netherite gives you nine netherite ingots. And what I say to that is, but you have to get the nine netherite ingots first to craft the block. So it's a lot of hard work, blood, sweat, and tears just for a block. I'd rather use the netherite on armor personally. But hey, this block still shows that you're a rich guy. And I personally wouldn't want to mess with you if you had these. Number 98 is the block of gold. The gold block is an easy way to obtain the activation for a beacon, since there's not so many uses for gold. And out of all of these rich blocks, gold is definitely one of the best decoratively, because gold just goes hand in hand with being rich. Also, since you find so much gold in the new deep slit caves, this is an easier block to obtain. Number 97 is the block of iron. This is another block to show off your huh? rich, but it has so many more uses. Because iron is so much easier to find, you can use the block of iron to make easier beacons. Because at the end of the day, the blocks still activate the beacon the exact same. But not only that, the block of iron can also create iron golems and make anvils. So yeah, overall, block of iron is a winner. Number 96 is the Dragon Egg. Although this block doesn't have many usages, it does have a purpose. This block only spawns once and it's a trophy to show that you beat the Ender Dragon. It's the one block in Minecraft that is a true trophy to say that, yep, you beat the game. Decoratively, this is a fantastic 
fantastic block. You can't go wrong with encasing the dragon egg in your base to tell everyone else that you slayed the dragon. Yeah, you did it. Look at you go. So, so proud of you. Thumbs up from me, Rennie. Number 95 is the end portal frame. Now, you wouldn't actually be able to get the dragon egg or the dragon head, heck, even the elytra without the end portal frame because this is your only way to the end. These blocks give you access to so much more of Minecraft, like the end cities, which gives you access to end stone, chorus fruit, pippet blocks, shulker boxes, so much stuff. Coming in at number 94 is the observer. An extremely powerful block used for a lot of things, but most importantly, automatic farms. So when the face of this block experiences a change, like a brand new block growing, it will set off a redstone signal. This is extremely useful because this block now can farm items for you while you don't have to do any work whatsoever. You can just watch those items flood in. Not to mention that this bad boy can help you make an automatic bamboo farm, which is pretty overpowered. Number 93 is the farmland. This block is at the center of all Minecraft farms. I mean, this is how you actually grow crops in Minecraft. Farming is such a crucial part of Minecraft as it's one of the main sources of food. You can grow wheat, carrots, potatoes, beetroots, melons, pumpkins, torch flowers, and pitcher pots. Farmland is the staple of farming in Minecraft, so that's why it ranks so high on this list. Number 92 to 82 are the wooden planks. The first block that you probably actually are going to craft once you spawn into your first Minecraft world. After you punch down your first tree, you craft that log into wooden planks. And now you can do whatever you want with it, but mainly you can craft the crafting table. The planks as the blocks themselves as a decoration block are also fantastic top tier blocks. They're just perfect for any starter early game house. And honestly, late game house as well. Like, planks can be used for pretty much any house you want to build. Since there are so many wooden types available, you can go absolutely wild and build whatever you want. Number 81 to 66 is the wood block and the stripped wood block. We're going to discuss these blocks together as one of these blocks is simply just the stripped variant of the other block. Now, not to be confused by the wooden log, the wooden block is a block crafted by wooden logs, where the main difference is the bark texture is on all six sides of the block. So mainly, this block is used decoratively if you don't want the top or bottom of the wooden log. You craft these wooden blocks by using four wooden logs into the crafting table and only getting three wooden blocks out. So every time you craft these wooden blocks, you're going to lose one wooden log in the process. Which, hey, it's a price to pay if you want these wooden blocks, I guess. These blocks are still high up on the list because you can still use them in the same recipes as wooden logs. You can still make campfires, you can still make planks, you can still make smokers, etc, etc. They are literally the wooden log, but with six sides of bark. Now, if you decided to go all fancy and right-click on these blocks with an axe, they'll actually strip, which means they'll lose all of their bark and look different, but they'll have the exact same functions and properties. Number 65 to 50 is the normal wood log and stripped log. Who would have guessed? Now, since we're here with the normal log, Let's talk about the log itself. The log is such a crucial part of Minecraft. It's the first block you really should break when you spawn into a world. It's the one block that leads you to countless other new opportunities. Like, for example, how else are you going to get the crafting table without the logs? They are here for a reason, and they are here to help you progress through the game. You cannot go wrong with this block, as you can craft it into planks as well. And most likely, your starter house is going to be made out of planks. Logs are also a fantastic block for building houses in general. I mean, just look at some of these houses and how the log helps this house look. It is a fantastic block. And just like the stripped wooden block, the stripped log is just a variant of the normal log, but this time, it is stripped of all its bark. Again, the stripped log has the exact same properties as the normal log. It just looks different. Number 49 to 41 are the saplings. Now, you might be wondering, how do I actually get trees for myself without them actually spawning in? Well, my friend, these saplings are going to be your best friend because these little guys grow into trees. All you got to do is place these guys around, wait a few minutes, and bam, you'll have trees everywhere. They're fantastic to start tree farms to mine for all of that glorious wood. And not to mention, you could collect the leaves as well. But in my opinion, the best part of a sapling is once it grows into a tree and that tree is destroyed, the tree will then drop even more saplings. So it's essentially an infinite tree glitch and you can exploit this quote-unquote glitch for infinite wood As long as you have yourself an axe you are sorted These saplings do include the mangrove propagule and also the rest of the saplings But I'm not gonna rank them because it 
is the exact same as my wood ranking, so there'd be no point. Number 40 to 34 is simply dirt. We wouldn't have all these great things like trees growing, plants flowering, and crops growing without our dirt. This block leads to so much, and it's actually such a useful, important block of Minecraft. I mean, heck, if you think of Minecraft, you probably think of the grass block, which is a variant of dirt. And not to mention, this block can be found absolutely everywhere, so you're not gonna run out of it. Here's my ranking of all the dirts for all of you dirt enjoyers out there. So, number 40, we have Podzol. Not the best looking dirt in my opinion, kind of poo-poo stinky, but it's still dirt. Number 39 is Mycelium. This block is so hard to come across because they only spawn in those little mushroom biomes. Number 38 is Coarse Dirt. We're getting there on the scale of dirt, but again, not the best dirt block, but I'm glad you can craft this block with gravel. Number 37 is Rooted Dirt. I get confused between Coarse Dirt and Rooted Dirt all the time, but Rooted Dirt looks like it has little worms inside. Look at the little worms. Number 36 is the dirt path. If you right click on dirt with a shovel, you get this little path block that looks really cool if you implement it into villages. Number 35 is simply dirt. Ha! Ah, what would I do without this block? I absolutely love the normal, good old classic Minecraft dirt. You can't go wrong with it. And another block you can't go wrong is the best dirt block, and that is ironically number 34, the grass block. Probably, if not the most iconic block of Minecraft. It's just right there all the time. The grass block is one of the best. Finally heading into our penultimate tier, it's the S tier, and all of these blocks, in my opinion, are worthy of the S tier. Number 33 is the structure block. Now, hold, hold, hold on a second. If some of you are saying, how is this in S tier? I just think this is such an underrated creative block. If you're a survival player, you're probably going to think this block is the worst. It doesn't even exist to you. This is a creative block. So I will quickly rip the band-aid off this puppy and say, yeah, this is a creative block only. But for you creative players out there who like to make mega builds in vanilla Minecraft, trust me, you need to be using this structure block. It is so useful. To simplify what this block does, you can actually save, copy, paste any of your Minecraft builds. All you gotta do is whip this block out, set your build within the boundary, and then you can do whatever you want. Name the structure, save it, you can even export it into other worlds. Looking at the UI for this block in Minecraft Bedrock makes me think this is a mod. Like, I did not believe that this was vanilla Minecraft for a second, until I actually looked into it and saw, yeah, this is actually in vanilla Minecraft. Java is a little bit different, it won't visualize it for you, but you can still do the same things. But yeah, just a very underrated creative block. Any builders out there, make sure you are utilizing the structure block as much as you possibly can. And it's definitely worth looking into. Number 32 is the command block. Yes, the command block is finally here. What an overpowered, awesome block. This block can do so much. As I can't stand here and talk about the command block all day as much as I would love to, to simplify it, the command block will let off a command when given a redstone signal. Perfect for custom survival maps, adventure maps, horror maps, or even just downright doing the stupidest, funniest things in Minecraft. Just look what Mr. Cat is doing with this block. It's, it's insane stuff. Sadly for you survival players, this is still a creative block only, but an overpowered, awesomely fun block to say the least. Love the command block. Coming in at number 31 is the Wither Skull. Now, there are reasons why this block is so high in my opinion. After defeating the Ender Dragon, you are craving more things to do. That's when the Wither comes into play. You need to collect three Wither Skulls. Now, these Wither Skulls are so hard to obtain, but when you actually obtain them, boy, does it put a smile on my face. I'm one step closer to getting that gosh darn beacon. And that is why I love the Wither Head so much, because it spawns the Wither. It adds an extra step of adventure into Minecraft. If you want the Nether Star for the Beacon, you're gonna have to get yourself these Wither Skulls. But not only that, if you have more of them, they are cool trophies for your wall, and you can wear them on your head. Hey, why not? Number 30 is Obsidian. Now, all of that talk about the Wither Skulls, I would never even be able to get to the Wither Skulls without Obsidian. You need Obsidian to open, that's right, the Nether Portal. I'd argue the Nether is one third of Minecraft. It is one of the three dimensions you have to traverse through to actually beat the game. I mean, heck, you need to trade with piglins to get pills and kill blazes for blaze rods. The nether brings so much exploration to the game, and I absolutely love it. But not only that, let's take a step back. Let's actually talk about obsidian itself. Obsidian is a solid, explosive proof block that can only be mined with a diamond pickaxe or a netherite pickaxe. You use obsidian to craft some of the greatest blocks in the game, including the beacon, the enchanting table, and the ender chest. 
first. This block is insane, and I absolutely love obsidian. Can't go wrong. Number 29 are the Minecraft paintings. Such a simple, yet a very, very effective block. In the Minecraft wiki, the painting is labeled as an entity, but just for the purpose of this video, it's gonna be a block. It can be crafted with eight sticks and one piece of any colored wool. There are currently 26 paintings in total, and they all come in different shapes and sizes. Not only do they look really awesome on your wall, but you can also hide a secret base behind your painting, which I think is so awesome. Even though this is the oldest trick in the book, I used to do this all the time, and I still do it to this day. This block has aged like fine wine. Such an amazing creative Minecraft block. I absolutely love the painting. Number 28 is the furnace. The beloved Minecraft furnace is a block that you use to simply smelt items. As it's so cheap, only crafted with eight cobblestone, cobblestone deep slit, or blackstone, you can acquire the furnace straight away at the start of the game. And unlike the blast furnace or the smoker, the furnace can smelt any smeltable item. As soon as you need to smelt iron, Bam, this block is here for you. As soon as you need to smelt woods to get some charcoal, bam, the furnace is here for you. The only thing you need to start to get cooking is a little bit of wood, and that is practically everywhere. I rate the furnace so highly because it's still one of the most important blocks of Minecraft. Number 27 is the Minecraft banner. In my opinion, the best Minecraft decorative block. It's pretty much a blank canvas, and you can do whatever you want on it. The only thing that will limit you with this block is your own creativity. I absolutely love mixing and matching all of the different patterns and all of the different colors to possibly come up with my own clan flag. If you do the math, there are over 809 quadrillion uniquely crafted banners. In Java version, you can chuck these on your shield as well to show that no one will mess with you. Just look at some of these banners and see how creative people have gotten. You can represent your own country with these banners in Minecraft, or you could show off your own creative passion. The possibilities with this block are absolutely endless, and that is why I love the Minecraft banner. Moving on swiftly to number 26, the Minecraft bed. The bed is a block that comes in every single color in Minecraft that can be used to sleep in, skip the night, and reset your spawn point. In a game where it is absolutely crucial to get back to your last death point to collect all of your items before they despawn, the bed comes in clutch. Because not only do you respawn at your bed, which could be anywhere, at your base, in the cave you're mining, but also it skips the night. So when it's early game and all of these spooky mobs are coming out to play to get you and to kill you, you're gonna wanna skip the night to kill all of these scary mobs in the sun. But not even early game, any point throughout the game, if mobs are getting on your nerves and it's nighttime, even phantoms, all you gotta do is go to sleep. It gets a little bit more tricky in multiplayer as everyone has to sleep at the same time, but in single player survival, you're good to go. If you thought all of that was good, beds also explored in the nether. Now you might think this is a random point until you realize the beds can be used to farm ancient debris, which is the strongest resource in Minecraft. So yeah, overall, the bed is a really powerful block in Minecraft. And personally, I wouldn't go playing the game with that one. Number 25 is Minecraft wool. Now to be quick and to the point, wool is used to craft beds, banners and paintings, some of the last blocks on this list. But not only that, walking on wool actually keeps you quiet in the game. So if you're exploring an ancient city, you're gonna need some of these blocks. As when you're walking on wool, the warden can't hear you and you're actually kept quiet. This can help you sneak and bag some awesome loot. Decoratively, the wool is an amazing block too, as it also comes in every single color. And to be honest, it was probably the first decorative block I used as it was added all the way back in Minecraft Java Edition Classic in 2009 where the block was actually called cloth. Ah, how times have changed. Number 24 is the powered rail. This is a rail block that you can ride on minecarts, but when powered with redstone will send you flying. This is mainly used to get minecarts uphill for things like getting out of mine shafts or for roller coasters. Yes, I refuse to believe that you watching this hasn't built a roller coaster in Minecraft. It was one of the funnest things to do in creative mode or even survival mode if you have enough resources. It's also a fantastic way to traverse your Minecraft world to get from point A to point B. And not only that, this is a fantastic way of kidnapping villagers and sending them off to your base so you can force them to trade with you. Overall, such a fun block. Going back and using this just for this video made me realize how much I actually do love this block. Number 23, and you are probably all waiting for it, is the diamond ore. This is such an iconic, crucial part of Minecraft, as diamonds is one of, if not the most valuable resource in Minecraft and can turn people against each other on Minecraft servers. As soon as some of these bad boys go missing from someone's chest, war is starting getting a little bit sidetracked, but the diamond ore is what actually produces the diamonds when you find it in mines. 
Finding this bad boy would literally light up a grin on my face from one year to the other. I mean, some of these reactions from these Minecraft kids pretty much sums it up. Just Emerald! We're rich! We're rich! Diamond! Ah! Unfortunately, after 1.19, I find it harder than ever to find the normal diamond ore, which is a little bit of a shame because probably the most iconic block of Minecraft is now a little bit more hidden and also looks different. No, they changed the texture. Number 22 is the hopper. Now, the rest of this list is getting really, really hard to rank because I can't decide on a ranking with all of these amazing blocks. It is so hard to find the right place for these blocks because they all bring so much to the table. So hopefully I'll be able to sleep tonight with hopper being number 22. This this is just how I'm feeling the rank today. My, my opinion's probably gonna change in a week or two or when the next Minecraft update comes out. So all I will say is if you're unhappy, don't take this list too seriously. Anyway, let's get on to the hopper, one of my favorite redstone components as it simply allows me to be lazy. This block will collect items for me and I won't have to lift a single finger. Any item farm, you name it, the hopper is there collecting it. And that is why this block is so fantastic. It will collect items for you, put them in a chest for you and you don't have to do anything. But not only that, this block will do item sorting for you as well. And it can take items from anything, like composters, brewing stands, chests, furnaces, glass furnaces, so much. This block does so much, and I absolutely love it. It can also be locked and unlocked as well. It just has so many item management uses. This block is amazing. And I would suggest if no one's using the hopper in their world, you guys should get on it. Number 21 is water. Naturally generating in the overworld everywhere, this block is absolutely so crucial and important. Where do I even begin with water? It has so many useful uses. Let's start at the basics. If you pick up water with a water bucket, you can save yourself falling from any height with a quick water MLG. And on the other hand of falling, you can use water to climb up any obstacle you face. Since water spreads over seven blocks and actually has a current, it can be used to push items across a number of blocks. This is extremely useful when paired with the hopper as the water can push items down a stream into the Minecraft hopper, which is perfect for automatic item farms. Not only that though, but a water source can actually spawn infinite cobblestone, which is pretty cool. Water can freeze into ice. You can make really cool water elevators in Minecraft by getting pulled down with magma blocks and pushed up with soul sand. TNT is extremely hard to blow up in water, so water can be used to protect your secret base. Not to mention, how are you going to grow all of your crops without water? In Minecraft, you need water next to your farmland to dampen the farmland so the crops can actually grow. And you can only place sugarcane next to water as well. And with all of this, just two sources of water can be used together to create an infinite water source, which literally gives you infinite water. The water is an amazing block in Minecraft and just has so many purposes. Number 20 is the deep slit diamond ore. Deep slit diamond ore is just as valuable as the normal diamond ore. It's just now more easy to find in the brand new caves. And simply that is why it's higher than the normal diamond ore. It is just so much easier to find in these new caves. And it's such a useful block as diamonds obviously lead to all of the diamond tools and diamond armor, which then inevitably upgrades into netherite. Number 19 is the block of diamond. Come on, you just knew this block had to be up here somewhere. <laughs> the block of diamond is a precious mineral block equivalent to nine diamonds. And this block just looks so good. I would choose this block any day of the week over the block of netherite. It's a nice turquoise blue color and it shows, hey, look at me, I'm rich of diamonds, screw you. Now, I would be lying if I didn't mention that I might be a little bit biased towards the diamond block as I used to use this block all the time when I I played Minecraft in my creative builds. This block was so legendary. Like, if you thought there was hype around diamonds, this was a full block made out of diamonds. It is simply just a decorative block that can be used to activate the beacon, but my goodness, this block is amazing. I'm gonna say it, something very controversial. I freaking love the diamond block, gamers. Number 18 is Deep Slit Redstone O. Now, this is where it all begins with redstone because this block simply does just drop redstone. And you use redstone in more or less every single redstone component. I mean, hey, it's in the name. Now, the only reason why deep slate redstone is a little bit lower is because when I'm in the deep slate caves, I probably had enough of redstone and I would rather find deep slate diamonds. Don't get me wrong. I am always in the mood for redstone and I would never turn down redstone. But if I already have enough of redstone and I'm looking for diamonds, I would rather have diamonds. We'll touch on redstone itself as it's coming up. But yeah, that's the 
deep slit redstone ore. Number 17 is the normal variation of redstone ore. Now, when I first want to use redstone, I'm actually going to have to go look for it in the mines, and I don't want to go too far. So when I see redstone closer to the surface, man, I am loving life. Give me all of that redstone, boy, I want to create a new piston dough. But yeah, there's not much difference between the normal redstone ore and deep slit redstone ore. One just spawns a lot deeper, and one just spawns a lot closer to the surface. And they both drop redstone, and no one can go wrong with some redstone. Number 16 is the sticky piston, one of the last redstone components before we actually reach redstone. Now, unlike the normal piston, the sticky piston can actually pull blocks back in. So earlier when I was talking about flying contraptions, flying cars, flying aeroplanes, the sticky piston is at the center of these builds. Not only that though, because the sticky piston can push and pull blocks, there are so many unique contraptions you can make with this block. For example, since sticky pistons can push and pull blocks, that means normal pistons can stick to the sticky pistons. So effectively, we now have a super piston. Now, don't get me wrong. I do use redstone and I know how it works and I know how to use it, but I'm not a complete redstone engineer like someone like Mumble Jumbo. But since I live on YouTube, I've seen what these blocks can do and they are absolutely insane. Some things that I can't even think of doing. Like, like, what is this contraption? What is that? What? Here? Overall, an amazing, fantastic, very useful, fun block. You can't go wrong with the Minecraft sticky piston. Number 15 is redstone itself. Redstone dust is the block placed on the floor to connect and wire all of these different redstone components I've talked about throughout this video. It is literally in the name, redstone component, redstone. Since redstone is placeable, and technically it's a block for this video, it can craft so many things as well, like the clock, the compass, the detector rail, dispensers, droppers, note blocks, observers, pistons, powered rails, redstone lamps, etc, etc. Etc. Pretty much every single redstone component I've talked about in this video was birthed by this redstone. And this block is at the heart of every single redstone contraption and build. It's so powerful, the things it can power up and the things this block can do is insane. Like I've previously mentioned, I am no redstone engineer, but the things I've seen this block do is absolutely insane. And the only thing that limits you from the next big redstone contraption is your creativity. You can be so creative with this block and do absolutely wondrous things. Redstone aside for using redstone for redstone, if that makes sense, you can actually use redstone in portions to make the duration of the portion last longer. Now that is a pretty cool unique bonus. Redstone can also be used to bring a spooky aesthetic to any build. I mean, when you put it on the floor next to a skeleton head, it kind of looks like someone's head has just been chopped off. I mean, since Halloween is coming up, decoratively, redstone could have its uses. Redstone is such a massive part of the game, and sometimes it's the reason why people even play the game. There is so much you can do with redstone, and I can't stress enough, if you don't know how to use redstone, definitely get learning. It's such a fun block to use. But yeah, I'm glad redstone is this high up and I feel pretty confident where it is on this ranking. Coming in at number 14 is Ancient Debris. Ancient Debris is the main way of getting the most powerful gear in Minecraft. Breaking these powerful blocks will give you netherite scraps, and when crafted with gold, you can get netherite ingots. And I gotta say, when I'm mining for these in the nether and I finally find one of them, the biggest smile slides across my face because I know I am one step closer to being even more stronger. I mean, netherite is the strongest gear in the game, and it all comes from this one single block. It is quite rare though, as it spawns below the world in the nether and you're probably gonna have to go mining for it with beds. So yeah, this block ranks super high as it's the source of the most powerful resource in Minecraft. Number 13 is the Brewing Stand. This block is used to make potions in Minecraft. And to say some of these potions are overpowered is an understatement. I mean, just look at strength. You can deal up to six more hearts of damage per attack. That is insane. That is over half of someone's health. The splash portion of Harming 2 completely ignores armor, which means you could like insta-kill someone in full netherite. Crazy overpowered stuff we're talking about. Yeah, but not only this, making potions in Minecraft is actually really fun. You can mix and match lots of things to get different potions, different outcomes. You can choose between making a potion last longer or to make a potion more potent. It adds a lot of variety of how you actually play the game itself and a lot of fun. I mean, with some of these potions, you can literally go invisible. You can jump higher. You can see in the dark. You can fall in slow motion, etc, etc. This block brings so much to Minecraft and I absolutely adore it. It's amazing. Coming in at number 12 is the enchanting table. After talking Talking about netherite and how strong it is, if you thought you couldn't get any more stronger, you'd be wrong. The enchanting table can enchant all of your armor and tools. 
all of the price of XP and Lapis. And some of these enchantments are stupidly overpowered. You'll be dealing a lot more damage, mining way quicker, setting players on fire, infinitely shooting bow and arrows. There are so much enchantments the enchanting table brings to the game that will spice up your playstyle. And the best part about the enchanting table in Minecraft is that you can enchant any tool. It doesn't matter if you're using netherite tools or heck, a wooden tool. The enchanting table is open for anyone who just has a little bit of XP and some Lapis. The amount of times the enchanting table has saved my life by giving me feather falling, I can't even tell you. Although to get the most powerful enchantments in Minecraft, you are gonna have to get bookshelves around the enchanting table. Decoratively, this block looks awesome as well. I mean, it has a floating book on it that looks at you. This is sick. Overall, an amazing, crucial part of Minecraft. Number 11 is the lectern. Hmm, the lectern is a block used to display and read written books. <laughs> is what I would say if I was a loser. This block is amazing, and to say the least, I think it's been exploited a little bit throughout the last years of Minecraft. The lectern is a librarian's job site block, and this is so powerful. We can do so much with this. Those poor villagers who are about to be librarians for life. Since when you place a lectern next to a villager, it's gonna turn into a librarian. These librarians are gonna offer you deals for enchanted books, and they can offer you any single enchantment ever. Doesn't matter what it is, which means you can sit next to a villager, keep on placing lecterns and breaking lecterns and placing lecterns again until you get the enchantment that you want. So not only can you get the enchantments that you want and need at that certain time, but you can also keep these villagers hostage at your base so you can buy these enchantments whenever you'd like. It is kind of so overpowered. All you gotta do is get one of these lecterns, place it next to a villager, and they will be a librarian. Then just get trading. And if you want extra points, you can turn that villager into a villager zombie, then kill them so they give you even better deals with these enchanting books. I mean, sorry, enchanting table, you just give me the enchantments you feel like. I want the enchantments I feel like, so I'm gonna use the lectern, yeah. Okay, here we go. It's been two hours and a half, and we finally reached the top 10 blocks of Minecraft. Since these are the top 10, they're all gonna go in an S plus rank. So, without further ado, let's get into our first block, and that is number 10, the anvil. All of that big talk about the enchanting books off the villagers, you wouldn't even be able to use any of these enchanting books without the anvil. The anvil is a great utility block with some fantastic functions and properties. The anvil is mainly used to rename items, combine enchantments, and repair items without losing the enchantments. The unfortunate downside about this, though, is the anvil does actually have durability. And if it's used or dropped too far, gradually becomes a chipped anvil, then a damaged anvil. And then, sadly, you will break into nothing. <laughs> no, anvil, no. The anvil is another great way to spend your experience on the enchantments you want. And when the anvil is paired with a villager trading hall with those lecterns, you become unstoppable. You can give yourself any enchantment you want, but at the cost of time and XP. Not to mention, you can give yourself the coolest tool names in history, like Gargathor the Destroyer, Chop Chop for your axe, Pew Pew for your bow, Captain Hook for your fishing hook, or Grave Digger for your shovel. Oh, maybe, maybe not that last one. The anvil is freaking amazing. I love Gargathor the Destroyer, and I love naming all of my items and tools stupid stuff. And all of this is thanks to the anvil. Thanks, anvil. Pretty cool. Coming in at number nine is the armor stand. Without a doubt, the coolest looking block in Minecraft. Like, having a full set of enchanted gear on an armor stand makes you just feel so cool, you know? When it's time to battle, you get your equipment off the armor stand, you put it on, and you're ready to go. It just looks so good, especially if you have spare armor stands lying around. This block becomes even better with the brand new armor trims. You can show off the coolest trims, the coolest armor sets. You can show off how rich you are with a set of enchanted netherite gear. Personally, if I walked into someone's base and saw enchanted netherite gear on an armor stand, I wouldn't mess, you know? No, 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 not for me, not today. Number eight is bamboo, and for a few good reasons. In the brand new update of Minecraft, some would argue that bamboo might have single-handedly ruined the need of actual wooden logs. Added in 1.14, bamboo is a versatile, fast-growing, bone-mealable plant found primarily in jungles. Bamboo can be collected by any tools, but swords specifically break the blocks instantly. If you're a psychopath, you can collect bamboo from killing pandas, that's another way, but, but, I, but I'd kill you. So now with all of the new bamboo plants, planks and stuff in the new 1.20 update. Bamboo is practically wood, but now it's an extremely easy farmable wood since you only now need a little bit of water, observers, and pistons. Whereas before, you needed the biggest, most expensive machines just to get automatic wood. I watched a video by the YouTuber Purplers who explained this in extreme detail and very well. Basically, if you don't want to build, the need for wood is now kind of useless as bamboo is now a new form of wood. It's just now it's ridiculously easy to obtain. I'll leave a link 
down below to purple as video. Go watch that after this video. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. My family of four is starving. So yeah, guys, Bamboo is here and Bamboo is here to stay. Coming in at number seven is the Minecraft Beacon. The beacon is a block that projects a beam skyward and can provide you with really cool status effects. As long as you're nearby this beacon, you could give yourself haste, you could give yourself speed, regeneration if you fancy, and the more you build this beacon up, the stronger it will get, leading to the biggest beacon, which is level four, needing 244 blocks or three stacks and 52 blocks. This block is extremely useful because once placed near any base, you will constantly get this status effect that will make you even stronger. And with this beacon, it always feels like you need to add more to it because it's so hard to actually get it to the max level. Not only that though, but the beacon in the sky means you can see your base from really far away. So if you get lost, just look up to the sky and look out for the beacon. And with this beacon, you can also dye the color of it with stained glass. And with these colors, you can actually mix and match them, which leaves 512 different colored beacons in Minecraft. This block is awesome. I love the fact that it shoots a beacon in the sky for you to find your base. I love the fact that you can color it and I love the fact that it gives you overpowered status effects. It's just such an amazing block that you need in your base. Coming in at number six and one of my personal favorite blocks in the entire game is the note block. This block is very unique as it plays a note when powered by redstone, which then means if you can power enough of these blocks at different times, you can play full songs all made in Minecraft. And some of these are absolutely insane. I used to spend hours of my time on YouTube just watching all of these note block covers in Minecraft. This then inspired me to start making my own songs in Minecraft. And it's just insane. The amount of layers this game has with redstone or music making is insane. That's why Minecraft is one of the best. This block definitely comes down to a personal preference. You either love it, you hate it, or you just kind of think it's there. But for me, I love the note block. All of the different sounds you can make, all of the blocks you can place it on top of. You can even make mob noises with it. Altogether, there are 16 different instruments that can come from these note blocks. And with these 16 different instruments, 25 notes can be played, which means you put these two facts together and you can make the coolest sounding note block covers ever. Just look at some of these. This is exactly why the note block is one of my favorite blocks in Minecraft. Coming in at number five is TNT, the block that ends it all. To simply put it, the TNT block explodes and it does a lot of damage. I absolutely adore the TNT block. I mean, when I was younger, I would genuinely just go into a brand new world in creative mode and just explode the world. Just place as much TNT as I could, find villages, blow them to smithereens. Don't really know what this says about me, but it was so much fun and I would spend countless hours was doing it on the good old Xbox 360 version. Not only that though, but if you have enemies in Minecraft, this block will destroy them. The best part about TNT is that it actually explodes when it's given a redstone signal. So this is perfect to trap any players who are trying to mess with you. Once set off, it does become gravity affected, which means it's going to fall and it is crafted with gunpowder and sand. TNT can be completely avoided if placed in water as it doesn't actually do anything if exploded underwater. I would be lying if I didn't say destruction in Minecraft is pretty fun. Not to say that you should go and ruin someone's day just by blowing up their house, but if someone messes with you, you can fire back with some good old TNT. But not only that, TNT can be used to help you automatically mine things like trees or diamonds, as TNT duplicators exist in the game. TNT is absolutely phenomenal. There has been nothing else like TNT since it came out, and it has aged like fine wine. It would be really cool to see if Mojang would add any new TNTs. I think that would be awesome, but I doubt it. Number four is the Ender Chest. If you play in multiplayer, this block is an absolute no-brainer. As this block is a type of chest whose contents are exclusive to each player and can be accessed from anywhere in the world. Which means if you have so much valuables and you want to hide them and you try to hide them, they can still be found and stolen by other players. But not when you put them in an ender chest. No, 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 your items are absolutely safe in the ender chest. Because it's like your own personal chest that no one else can open into. But not only that, you can have these ender chests scattered across the world. And if you're a far traveler, you can take these items with you and access them at any time throughout the world. 
Not only that, and this point is a little bit meaner, but you could take someone else's valuable and put them in your own ender chest, and they will never be able to get that back. Unless, you know, you do a little bit of bartering. Am I telling children to blackmail in micro? No, I am not doing that. that do not blackmail kids. But right. if someone has messed you wrong, stand up for yourself. That's all I'm saying. Entering our top three blocks with number three, the Shulker Box. Hands down, one of the best blocks in Minecraft. This block gives you so, so much more inventory room. One of the most annoying things about Minecraft is having limited inventory space. Like, you're going mining and you can't collect enough resources. With the Shulker Box, that completely nullifies that problem. It doesn't become a problem anymore because you have even more inventory space. You simply gotta place your Shulker Box, put your items in it, then break that Shulker Box and pick it back up. Each Shulker Box gives you 27 more inventory spaces, and that is just one Shulker Box. If you had a Shulker Box in all 36 slots of your inventory, you would have up to 972 inventory spaces. That is a lot of inventory spaces. It's also a fantastic way to sort your items. Like in one Shulker Box, you could have all of your wood, and in another, you could have all of your stone. Definitely one of the best blocks in Minecraft, whoever you are. I think we can all agree that this is one of the greats. Let's give it up for our runner-up, number two, the chest. Now, yes, this block does give you so much more storage. With each chest giving you 27 more spaces to place items in, and you can double that to 54 spaces by simply placing another chest to make a double chest. Chests can be used to actually craft hoppers, which is phenomenal, but also hoppers connect into chests, so when you get automatic items coming in, they will all go into your chests. And these chests will simply sit there, wait, and collect all of these items for you. But we haven't even gotten to the best part of chests yet. Chests naturally spawn throughout Minecraft with some of the best loot in the game. Whenever you see a Minecraft chest in the wild, you literally cannot wait to open it to see what is inside. You just automatically have a need to like open that chest and see what's inside of it. Like in chests throughout all of Minecraft, you can naturally find emeralds, diamonds, gold, even netherite ingots. You can find enchanted diamond armor, enchanted tools, enchanted books, TNT, the list goes on. And that is why I think this chest is the second best block in Minecraft. On one hand, it's used to store items for in your base, and on the other, it's found out in the wilderness to give you extremely valuable loot. So here we are, we've finally arrived after two hours and 40 something minutes at our number one block on this list. Guys, if you are still here and you've watched the entire video, genuinely from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much. This video took way, 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 way too long to make. So yeah, I appreciate it. Anyway, I'm gonna stop blabbing on. You probably know what this block is already. The number one best block in Minecraft is the crafting table. Yeah, that was anticlimactic. It's literally the crafting table. But on a serious level, I've said throughout this video, where would we be without that block? Where would I be without this block? I mean it this time. Where would we be without the crafting table? The crafting table is the one block that allows us to literally do what half the game says, to mine and craft. That is, that is half the game. We really do need this block. On a serious level though, when you do spawn into your Minecraft world for the first time, the first thing that you are probably subconsciously wanting to get is the crafting table. You use this block to craft every other item and block in the game. Well, un unless they can be crafted with the 2x2, two two, but I'm talking about majority of the crafts in the game. And I mean, it's obvious, it's anticlimactic, but I think it's true. This is truly the best block in Minecraft. It leads to everything in the game. So, I, you know, I gotta hand it to the crafting table. Well done. Round of applause. The crafting table's the winner. Woo, yeah, crafting table. <sighs> and there you have it. That is every single block in Minecraft ranked. Guys, thank you so much for watching this huge video. I appreciate everything every single one of you for watching this video. If you haven't already, make sure to like and sub. If you've watched all the way to this point, comment down below for epic block time. I'll heart your comment because I know you're a real one. And hey, let's discuss about this big video. What did you agree on? What did you disagree on? Let's have a chat. If you also fancy discussing more, you can join the Discord. All links will be down in the description down below. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you want to see more, let me know in the comments down below and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace. Bye-bye.